for the speakers nothing as such um so he get we let in all the participants start youtube live and uh, um, hand it out to speaker okay so i just good morning participants i can go with my ppt yeah yeah, right? yeah. Uh, okay. okay we are live okay, okay let's start let, let's start the session good yeah. morning participants welcome to the fourth day of learn how to learn webinar series today today's webinar ambar nagar by shri raghavan sir is on how to learn mathematics today we have with us ks natraj sir director of bv jagdish science center hello sir what of you hello yes and we have uh, Altaf Pasha sir is a scientific officer of BV Jagdish Science Center hello sir hi and we have the speaker Shri Raghavan sir who is a speaker of the session happy morning guys good morning <clears throat> students might have heard terms like maths anxiety and maths phobia or express themselves with those terms <laughs> how to learn is the important question that needs to be addressed our speaker addresses this question and he will introduce himself to us and deliver the lecture over to shri raghavan sir thank you let me just, let me just, let me just uh, say one thing about uh, shri raghavan shri raghavan uh, is an old student of uh, national college uh, uh, just be, before we started the session he was just uh, talking to us he said uh, this is his forte Na national college jainagar uh he he has come to the national college uh, innumerable number of times and he has also been associated with bv jagdish science center uh, in more, very many activities and so um, i never uh, consider him as an outsider now he is one with us uh, i'm i'm so happy nano bekas anekaru helta irthini namma ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ರಾಜ್ಯ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಪರಿಷತ್ ಆಗ್ಬೋದು ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಾಲಜಿ ಅಕಾಡೆಮಿ ಆಗ್ಬೋದು ಕೆ ಸ್ಟೆಪ್ಸ್ ಆಗ್ಬೋದು ನಾಟಿ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಜಯನಗರ ಬಿವಿ ಜೆ ಈ ಎಲ್ಲ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಎಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾಡಿ ಯಾವ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮ ಮಾಡಬೇಕಾಗಿದ್ದನ್ನು ನಾನು ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಘವನ್ನ ನಿಲಯದ ಕಲಾವಿದರು ಗುಂಪಿಗೆ ಸೇರಿಸ್ಕೊಂಡಿರ್ತೀನಿ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಮಗೆ ಯಾವಾಗ್ಲೂ ಹಿ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡಿ ಫರ್ ಎಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಿ ಹಸ್ ನೆವರ್ ಸೆಡ್ ನೋ ಈವನ್ ವಿತ್ ಎ ವೆರಿ ಶಾರ್ಟ್ ನೋಟಿಸ್ ಮೆನಿ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ನೋಟಿಸ್ ಬಹಳ ಕಡಿಮೆ ಇದ್ರು ಕೂಡ ಬೇರೆ ಬೇರೆ ಅವರ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ಅನ್ನ ಅಡ್ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಿಕೊಂಡು ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಟು ನ್ಯಾಚುರಲ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಜಯನಗರ್ ಸೊ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಘವನ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ವೆರಿ ಈಗ ಟು ಲಿಸನ್ ಟು ಯು ಯು ಕೆನ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಅಪ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಕೆನ್ ಯು ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವೇಟ್ ಸ್ಕ್ರೀನ್ ಶೇರಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ಸ್ಕ್ರೀನ್ ಶೇರಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ಮಿ ಅಲ್ತಾ ಫಾರ್ ಉದಾ ಯು ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಡೂ ದಟ್ Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's done. No. No. Fantastic. Uh, so, very good morning to all the young aspirants who are right now starting your journey uh, towards... better careers better opportunities i was in your seat uh, way back in 1994 95 as a young student uh, who was thoroughly mentored and well trained by professor natraj sir and a uh, couple of uh, my inspirations from national college uh, bnr sir and uh, i have gsl ma'am quite a lot of them i can actually list the whole set of department teachers who were there and who have always stood by me whenever uh, i had a tough time uh, whenever i was deviating off from my uh, path of uh, love for physics okay i started off as a guy who loved physics the most than anything else in the world and uh, my understanding of physics led to my the second love which is the love for mathematics okay so as and when i got deeper and deeper with the understanding of physics i realized that uh, mathematics was my only tool was my only companion to go deeper and deeper into my understanding of this universe okay so today i'm going to share with you some of the insights and also try to inspire you uh, into the path of uh, learning mathematics i'll give you certain tips about how maths is looked at and uh, what kind of maths uh, you know you will face during the next 2 years or the next 6 years of your 
academic life and what after that right so there are a few challenges that i will share with you if you are interested in it you should take it up and then work on it so that uh, india can see the next field medalist from one of you in this particular crowd okay. so my aspiration is that uh, this particular talk should inspire most of you or at least one of you to go there and get the uh, prize for the country right so i am still there in the competition so let's work together okay. that that's how it will go for all of us so uh, i am going to distribute this in terms of a bit of uh, tribute to my people and then just to start off with for all those uh, math nerds here if you can get this then we are on to a good start okay uh so uh, typically in maths that is what we always understand between the numerator and the denominator there is a very thin line right <laughs> and only a fraction of people really get what it is okay so uh, what it actually means here is that uh, very few people dedicate their life towards mathematical understanding of the world right and there are only a hand few people 10 or 12 of them you can actually count at any given time who are into hardcore mathematics and uh, who drive the change in the world right these are the people whose work actually decides how the entire world functions okay that is something uh, which is which has always wowed me as a student and continues to wow me that how only 10 people putting their minds together are governing the entire process of how the world's economy or how the world's processes are being run okay there might be millions of companies which work together but there are only few minds which actually guide these companies that's the whole idea that i want you to think in by the end of this uh, particular seminar session right so what you see on the image is basically uh, understanding of pi why pi is actually approximately 22 by 7 right this is a toy that i have created with some of my students uh, to understand the meaning of circumference by diameter okay so that is why that picture is there and that's something that my students created to understand why pi was 22 by 7 and i'm sure a lot of you have these questions uh, if pi is written as 22 by 7 why is it irrational because we all know that you know uh, rational numbers are written in the form p by q irrational numbers cannot be written but still we say that pi is 22 by 7 so first correction there pi is approximately 22 by 7 let's start with that right that's the beauty of mathematics it purifies your understanding it simplifies your understanding and also helps you articulate better about uh, some of the misconceptions that rest of them have that is where the a mathematician is actually according to me a perfect person who understands the universe the way it is okay so let's go to the next idea any journey does not start without a proper tribute to the giants that have actually got us all here like newton said i would like to borrow the words of newton's whatever i am seeing the further i see is by standing on the shoulders of giants okay and i am also trying to understand a bit from uh, shakespeare so here it is what's in a name right now if i don't write the names of these people what's happening in your mind right now you don't know who they are and you don't know what i'm going to talk about right so i'm going to start uh, giving you such kind of triggers of how important quantification is how important naming is how important a the theorem is uh if you do not have all those things it's very difficult and very vague for the world to really uh, you know be understood so you will see hipashia you will see uh, ada lovelace here you will also see uh, emma noether some of the greatest minds that have changed the way we actually learn mathematics right you will not study about any of these guys in your textbook all right it's not because they have not contributed it's just because they are too complex to understand okay now how to make this simple that is the beauty because most of the time for all of us mathematics appears as a very complex subject and most most of us have this common fear that oh there is so much to solve right and remember before you there were tens and thousands of men who have actually cracked this anxiety of understanding the world in a way that others never tried to understand okay so whether it was isaac newton or whether it was arivata on our side the reason why i am not put indian photographs is because we don't know really if they look like that okay we only have images done by artists these are real people so in mathematics it's important to be as real as possible though you are dealing with imaginary numbers okay if you can uh, get those ideas that is something very important 
uh, most of the mathematics that we 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 learn in our books today are all uh, you know kind of designed by the giants here who have actually given certain structure the person in the bottom row if you see the central one in the bottom row uh, is grothendieck you, you can see my style remember you know kind of resembling his i'm kind of a crazy fan of grothendieck now because he was a part of a team of mathematicians which introduced mathematics through set theory okay after reading his book after uh, being inspired by him now i am a huge fan of set theory because everything in the world is explained by mathematics and everything in mathematics is actually set that's the beauty okay so if you are you know kind of looking at groups and sets and trying to understand what is all this language jumble they have and other things it's time that you start paying a little more close attention to the set theory classes in mathematics because everything in mathematics today can be written in simple terms of a set okay so if you want to understand what's the simplest way to learn mathematics first understand what a set is then understand what a relation is then understand what a function is these three things if you understand correctly in mathematics you are going to understand literally everything in mathematics that is going to be thrown at you in the next few years okay that's the beauty of set theory that is where i want you to uh, you know kind of catch the glimpse of the beauty of mathematics but today i am not going to talk to you about set theory this is just a thing that i wanted to give you what am i going to talk about today why is mathematics important okay so most of us have been told that you know maths is going to uh, solve most of your day to day problems things like addition subtraction you can count money these are the simple things that people have already told you okay and i'm also going to share 10 different ideas where mathematics has made a huge difference in the way we look at the world but before all that what is it that we need to be aware of why mathematics is important mathematics is important because this is what separates us from the rest of the animals in in the larger sense of things math animals also do math which i'm going to share with you in a quick bit uh, in a while but we are the species in the animal kingdom that has the capability of reasoning if you see uh, one of the things there is the reasoning skill this reasoning skill that the human brain has is purely driven by mathematical intelligence people who can understand the sense of the ones that are present there which is real and the ones that are not present there which is actually imaginary right so for very simple minds whatever they cannot imagine they call it god they try to put it on a higher power and they say this is how i'm going to handle it when i was of your age i used to feel really irritated when they start talking about all these things but with age comes wisdom now as a mathematician i am trying to understand how the other brain is actually working and what is their way of thinking their way of thinking is when they do not know how to handle the imaginary it's always easy to put it onto a higher power and say this is beyond my control right but like i told you only a fraction of people understand that thin line between the numerator and the denominator so if you are there in that fraction of people who can understand the thin line then for you the mathematical reasoning is the skill it's an intelligence that will make you one of the person who can actually go one step further to question why the things are the way they are that is where your journey of mathematics begins where you are trying to quantify every single thing around you to understand how things work in the universe many a time there are no physical parallels which you can actually imagine or show people and say what you are talking about for example we have this whole idea of the god's particle which is called the higgs boson okay very few people really understand how they are trying to detect the higgs boson most of them have done this theoretically including higgs himself made a prediction that there is such a particle based on pure mathematical solutions and trust me he did not use a mathematics more than what you know okay that is that is the beauty of mathematics he has not used any complex mathematics more than what a 12th grader would have really understood okay therefore the importance of mathematics is it is one of the key intelligences which 
makes us different from the rest of the animals right so we need to work on it we need to develop that so how do we do this animals too have their own intelligence of course the bees don't use kilometers and second that is something we have for ourselves but for us to understand how bees are communicating we have just put some numbers there so bees are pretty good at trigonometry and i learned this uh, in a maths class uh, sitting there in the benches of national college only not before that trust me okay uh, i i still remember uh, gk ranganath sir actually talking to me about uh, the idea of trigonometry and when we were simply asking him sir what's the use of all these things that we are doing anyway the mastery does not really use any trigonometry to measure the height of the building but you are solving all these problems and he said if a bee can do it you should do it better than that okay so it, it that's how we've had conversations with teachers and uh, that's how they have inspired us so that's what i thought i would share with you so now we are going to take one step thing one step into mathematics now if the bee is using certain things intuitively this is an intuition for the for the bee it comes naturally to the bee and more than intuition i would say it's an instinct it's born with it and it's going to use it for communication not that it went to a college or a school and learned all these mathematics but it's born with that instinct and it's working on it for us the instinct that we have for mathematics is basic counting okay so anything we learn mathematically starts with counting that is why in lkg they taught you what is 1 2 3 4 5. and then all the rhymes and everything that's the structure that you have learned as you progress right you've learned different ways of dealing with mathematics so you understood what the bee does naturally only in 9th grade okay that does not make you small it just says that there is a structure in which we are learning now can i teach trigonometry to a kindergarten kid definitely i can but i don't know how many of them will really understand right that is where we are so we need to understand what is the level of uh, effort that the student is going to uh, require to understand certain concepts of mathematics so that is why when you are in 11th grade a lot of things appear to be very difficult for you but when you go to the 12th grade or your graduation you see that the same concepts that were once difficult start appearing to be very simple and very straightforward because now you have maturity to understand how this whole thing works now what is the maturity that you have developed so far in mathematics right it's a very simple fundamental theorem of mathematics which is lhs equal to rhs if you are talking about inequalities okay if you are talking about inequalities then it is not equal this is this is the most fundamental thing and all of mathematics is is just that can you balance them lhs equal to rhs or is lhs greater than or less than rhs okay but nobody told you that this was this simple most of them told you that there are a lot of equations so i'm going to show you how i appreciated the beauty of mathematics these are my top 10 things that i want you to understand what you see on the images one is a fibonacci series which you will never use in your uh, school and college life but that's the way the nature works there's a way in which nature has evolved itself in the term of a spiral whether you're looking at the galactic evolution where the galaxies are spiral galaxies and non spiral galaxies or whether you take the crustaceans which develop shells on themselves in the universe they follow a very simple mathematical pattern so whenever you go to beauty of mathematics on the internet you're going to see all these kind of things but the one on the right hand side of the screen e is equal to i pi plus 1 equal to 0 okay one of the most beautiful equations of the world why because if you can understand that equation you understood all aspects of mathematics that you have learned from your third standard starting from what is a natural number what is a whole number to what is an integer to what is you know an irrational number a rational number an imagine number all of those things are covered in one single equation which is e to the power i pi plus 1 equal to 0 done by euler that is why this is called the euler's equation and this is the most beautiful equation in the world okay now it's the most beautiful equation to me it may not appear the same to you because you have still not experienced the depth of mathematics so this is the time for you to actually start looking at how to go deeper into mathematics now before understanding how to go deeper i'm going to give you 10 reasons why you need to go deeper okay 
any mathematics, the most important thing is to understand why. Okay, why are we doing mathematics? We know that it is one of the most, most uh, one of the intelligences that we have. But also, mathematics in the day-to-day -day scenario helps us solve a lot of problems which we take for granted. A lot of people sitting around writing algorithms and others have solved our problem. Very simple example is, today you and me are sitting here on a Zoom conference call at the leisure and at the comfort of our house because there's somebody who's written a program which is a pure mathematical beauty to make this happen. Okay? And the presentation that you're seeing, okay, also has a mathematical thing. I have used artificial intelligence to create this particular slides. What I did is I have used Microsoft PowerPoint, which uses a simple tool to go and search for information on the internet to actually create a PowerPoint presentation based on what I have requested it to do. Most of the time, I would actually go to the internet, search the images, download them, then put it in a presentation. This is what I'm talking about in 2010, 2015. By 2020, mathematics has come so deeper into every single aspect of learning that today Microsoft says, what do you want to do with the presentation? And all I said was how to inspire students with mathematics. And here I got a whole presentation which gave me a structure which said, look, these are the things you can talk about. Now, all I had to do was I have a thought on what I want to present to you, reorganize the slides and put it up there. So you can see that life has become more and more easier for people who actually are thinkers. And we get a lot of time, a lot of brain time to think on what we want to do and not really worry about how I'm going to make a presentation. Right? And that is the beauty of mathematical way of solving problems. So I will sure share with you 10 ideas where mathematics has solved so many problems. What I want you to understand is all that I'm going to talk about here is not more than a quadratic equation. Okay, so let's begin. Number one. Okay, so first thing, the Shannon's entropy. This is, you will understand all of these things in, in the years to come. Don't worry about, oh, I don't understand this equation today. Okay. Follow my rule. I have only done one thing. If I don't understand this today, I will always say that, okay, let me understand what I have today. Tomorrow I will understand this better. Okay. So what you need to do is if some of these things interest you, now go and bug your teachers about, ma'am, can you teach me this? Or sir, can you help me understand this idea so that you can make your own understanding of this entire world. Okay. Not a teacher cannot give you everything in the classroom of 40 minutes or in one year. Trust me on that. We can only give you certain inspirations and guidelines in which you have to walk, but you have to walk the path. Okay. If you're not a good student, even Einstein cannot teach you relativity. Okay. The best guys in the world will not be able to give you the good experience of learning unless you are a good student. So the core is always this. First, you have to be a good learner, a dedicated learner. Troubles are going to be there. Problems are going to be there. Anxiety is going to be there. But if you are a good student, all of this makes the journey worth the while. Okay. This is something that I've understood. When I wanted to do astronomy, I uh, took the help of uh, Natraj sir and I went to Planetarium and I took a course with uh, Dr. Shailaja. Midway somewhere, you know, it was so theoretical and so many things. And I started bunking classes. All right. And then I, I remember very vividly that once uh, Natraj sir called me out of a class and he said, how come you're not going to the planetarium? And I was, you know, this is the era where there was no mobile phones. Nobody could have communicated, but still there was a way in which they kept a tab on all of us. No GPS, nothing. They knew that you were not doing things. Right. That is something that has always stayed with me because those kind of questioning, those kind of mentoring, right. Helped me stay on the, stay on the path, stay focused. Not that, Natraj sir has uh, sat with me to explain uh, the universe and other things with us, but he's always sat with me to explain the discipline that is required to be there to understand the universe. You know, that is a role of a teacher that I would want you to take from your teachers. Don't expect your teachers to solve everything for you. Teachers are there only to monitor whether 
you are doing it right or you need any help. There's nothing wrong in this universe. You just keep trying it, right? So let's look at one. Shannon's Entropy talks about the entire internet. The, your, if you are able to go to the internet and work on anything, it's purely because of that simple equation that you see there, okay? If you go to a hospital, get your MRI done, you're getting your CT scans done and you're getting the image out of some interaction that you don't understand, it's purely because of Fourier transformation. All right, and translations of all the images that you're seeing on the internet to from digital information, time-based information to the information of images, that's all for your transformation. If your aeroplanes are landing safe, not landing on your house, trust Navier-Stokes equations because that has everything to do with fluid dynamics and aerodynamics there. So if your weather patterns today, they are able to give you three days advance warning that there's gonna be a rain, that is purely because of Navier-Stokes equations. They're able to understand the weather, okay? And these are all in very simple forms. And trust me, all these equations are not more than order two. If you know quadratic equations, these are all basically linear and quadratic equations, nothing more than that. And you have learned all these things by ninth grade. Operations with them, you're going to learn in 11th and 12th grade. So nothing new about any of these equations that are given here. And if you see all the symbols, the sigma, the integration, all that, you learned this in first standard, which is addition, nothing more than that. It's just a different way of adding numbers. It's just a different way of multiplying numbers. But the fundamental philosophy there is addition and multiplication only, nothing more than that. So you don't really need to crack your head off, oh, what are they doing? They're not doing anything. They're just adding things. They know what are the things to be added. They know the parameters there. Now, this is where a teacher can help you. You can go back and understand, sir, what is this log? How do I understand this? How does a log function work, right? And then if you look at nature, where the, the nature behaves in a logarithmic way, you know, okay, this is how the expression talks about it. And this is what I can understand from nature. That is how you simplify things for yourself. The more effort comes from you, the easier it is for you to learn any of mathematical things. The more effort the teacher is putting, the teacher is becoming better, but nothing is getting into your head. Trust me. Okay, this is my understanding in the last 20 years of teaching. The more effort I have put to teach, I have become a better teacher, I have become a better student. The more effort the students have put towards learning, they have become better. Okay, so that's the fundamental uh, rule of nature you need to understand. Maxwell's equation, of course, everything that you're dealing with electricity and magnetism and anything, any electronic devices that are running today, they all use Maxwell's equations. If you're getting all your satellites and everything in position to give you all the data information and uh, giving you the understanding of the universe, thanks to Einstein's relativity, that is making everything possible, including travel across to different planets and all those things that we are doing today, okay? So a lot of things happen in the background, which you're not aware of. Now let's come to real life today, right now in your phone, right now in your hand. These are the five things that are making it happen, okay? One, of course, the quantum equation, what you see on the first, uh, the, uh, I would say the second quadrant from how you have learned it, right? The second quadrant of the graph, you will see that that's the quantum equation. So a lot of quantum information, anything about the atom, anything about the structure of the atom, anything about the electronic transitions that you're learning, P block, D block, F block elements that you're understanding, all comes out of that simple equation that is gonna tell you what is the position and momentum of electrons. You can do that. It doesn't look like it's going to tell you anything there. There's only E, deltas, and I's and J's. But what is it actually trying to tell you is very simply an eigenvalue equation. Okay. Now, for you to understand that, you don't need any higher order mathematics at all. All you need to understand is how do how does operators work? What is the meaning of an operator? Okay, you're gonna learn a little bit of this in your second PU physics when you do atomic. So trust me, all these equations that we're talking about is, is all done before 12th grade only. After 12th grade, whatever you're going to learn is only the next step, taking the equation one step higher, taking the equation one order higher, but all of those equations that you're going to learn, you have already learned it in your previous classes. Nothing new. That's the thing that you need to understand. That is why learning mathematics is simple. If you go back to your sixth grade, go back to your seventh grade and understand how the fundamentals were taught, what were the fundamentals? If you have not understood that there, then it's time that you go back to the basics, okay? And when you now go back and look at a sixth grade or a seventh grade concept, it really does not appear to be very difficult to use. 
but go and talk the same thing to a fifth grade child that you know these are fractions improper and proper fractions they'll be looking at my face and saying why are you doing this right i have had students who come back to me and say sir why do we need all these mathematics where are we applying all these mathematics ever in our life right so the answer to that for a fifth grader is very difficult but the answer to that to you today is much easier you can see that the rsa algorithm the rsa algorithm is something that actually makes your mobile cash payment transactions simple right secure so when they say when whatsapp says end to end encryption of data this is what they are using all they are doing is converting all your codes into prime numbers and because prime numbers are not so simple to handle by easy crack, you know uh, hackers that's that's an algorithm that helps you secure your data and it can move from one one location to another without anyone knowing what is there inside that particular codes of prime numbers right then of course your gps gps is much more fundamental right it simply uses pythagoras theorem okay and you learned it in eighth grade so trust me that that's not really very complicated at all position between two points the shortest distance between those two points right always the hypotenuse if you know how to break a right angle triangle around that and this is something in 11th grade you have you will also study as resolution of vectors nothing more than that trust me all of this is just that the thing is nobody tells you that it is okay so this is where as a student you need to go and you know latch on to your teachers sit on their head and say can you give me more real life examples of all this so that you can relate to the mathematics that you are studying that is how beautiful and how simple a mathematical expression is going to be okay then comes the google page ranking this is something that you will need tomorrow when you become entrepreneurs okay when you are entrepreneur i i listened to couple of uh, lectures where they talked about being an entrepreneur what are the uh, challenges that you will have i am an entrepreneur myself so i can tell you that social media marketing digital marketing is one of the key ideas okay in today's success of a business so if businesses have to be successful they need to know how to reach to the people they need to know what is the requirement of the client requirement of a person so today if you have an idea i'm sure some of you are into coding some of you are uh, trying to develop some product of your own so if you want to reach the audience the most important aspect is customer discovery who is the person who is willing to pay for your idea so when you go to customer discovery you need to have algorithms which are going to tell you how am i going to find the right kind of audience for my product okay that is where the google page ranking and the google algorithms help you to actually present your product to the person now you don't need to know that entire mathematics there they have already done it people have already figured out what is the method in which you need to uh, find the right customer or the right information right so the search engines and optimizing the search engine effort is also one of the key information key knowledge an entrepreneur should have going further so you are the next generation entrepreneurs you are going to come up with brilliant ideas that are going to change this world so it's important that you understand the basics of how these things are done even by google because if google has an algorithm and if you know how to make that algorithm work for you effectively nothing better than that otherwise what happens is you end up spending a lot of money on hiring people who can actually do this okay so if you know basics of mathematics basics of quadratic equations and basics of differential equations you will be able to solve lot of complex problems that google is currently trying to solve for all of us but because it's a company because google is trying to solve it for you it is also imperative that google is going to have certain restrictions on what part of the problem it will solve for you so if you are pretty good at the math that you know that basic mathematics then you will always be able to figure out how am i going to tackle this how am i going to make the most out of this that is where the leadership quality of yours is required you know to be shown and that is where you need to prepare yourself 
for the challenges of tomorrow so anticipation is another thing how do you estimate what kind of situations can come in the future it's a mathematical problem to solve so you need amount of data which you are going to collect right put that data into a proper statistics to understand what the data means and what is the end result that the data can give you and with that result what can you do to solve the basic problems that you have sometimes you might solve a problem that you are facing sometimes you might actually solve a problem that the entire world is facing right either way mathematics is the only tool that is going to help you there to break down the problem into different steps that will help you understand what data do i need at each step and how am i going to crack this particular problem okay so in mathematics we call it the dpic method of working with problems okay so to know more about those kind of methods you can uh, probably log into google and search or uh, your mathematics teacher would have already given you some hint in terms of what is given what is to be proved right and how do i prove it so to prove that and to show that you know these are the theorems and all that but the dpic technique is pretty simple first is you have to describe a problem in your own words that's the d for so here if you look at it what they have tried to do is they have described a specific problem in terms of when people come to google how do i collect the information what is it that i need to know what is it that the people are looking for how do i solve that so there are people who are solving something there are people who have a problem how do i connect these two people together that is basically your google's page page ranking algorithm so it ranks your page up in the sequence depending on how many people are using your solution depending on how many times you know somebody looks for you because that is where the algorithm is saying that something is interesting here that is why people are going there so that becomes the top most ranked page and now there is one more business case so google can also say if you want to be in the top list then you pay me some money as an advertising thing and i will put you there okay now see this is a problem that they solved for you know increasing the ranking of a page trying to give people an idea that okay these this is the most searched thing on the internet now they can also take some financial benefit and move you up the order if you actually look at it you might call it no this is cheating but you look at it from google's perspective this is business they've got enough business there to operate and work on it and see the equation that is making all of this happen it made google one of the most richest companies in the world and all they have is that very simple equation right there so is facebook if mark zuckerberg is so popular it's because of the simple algorithm that he is using there to make people use facebook without any difficulty so today most of us are into social media not necessarily facebook and google we are into various other aspects of social media all those social media apps all the social media facilities that you are using okay they are all based on a very simple fundamental mathematical equation and they are able to do this because they took a real life problem they saw how this real life problem can be solved using a very simple mathematical algorithm then created an app out of it that is the reason why today there is so much of rush that people talk about children should learn coding children should learn coding but remember this mathematics also tells you one thing statistically no matter how many people learn coding statistically there is a very few very very small percentage of people Who will actually be successful in coding? That's the reason why, though there are millions and millions of people who are doing coding and apps on the you know app stores of all the kind of companies like Amazon or Google, there's only one Amazon and there's only one Google, okay, which is actually making all the money. The rest of the app stores, they just depend on somebody else who's working on it. so you need to be a little more smart here when somebody says okay everybody can come and come and do coding the simple question is why this is something i have always learned from uh, professor h narsimhaya the founder father of national education society right so he had this very fundamental thing that he always relied on which is never accept anything without question 
people may give you million reasons people may give you million offers saying that you know if you do coding your life is going to be that your life is going to be this but what is the most fundamental thing is you should always understand why am i going to do this it's not about uh, do i have money in it or not most important thing is why do you want to get into something that you are not interested in so you should always figure that out what is it that is interesting the most here my purpose of giving you this particular talk was to show you that there is so much to mathematics okay but the secret is very simple the most fundamental truth about mathematics okay if you are ready for it this is going to be my last but one slide i'll probably leave it at that all right uh this is it this is the fundamental truth about all mathematics that you are doing in your life all you ever wanted to know about mathematics you've already learned it in kindergarten the thing is now you need to go back and look at how do i develop my understanding of mathematics from what i have learned the basics of counting addition subtraction multiplication and division nothing more than that all other forms of mathematics that you are learning whether it is the logarithms the exponentials or the uh, algebraic expressions your analytical geometry differentiation calculus all of this simply have their foundations from counting nothing more than that so literally if you see people have not told you the secret at all that all you ever wanted to know about mathematics you have already learned it in kindergarten right and some of them yes of course in third seventh and eleventh grade i tried to use it because they are all prime numbers and they're interesting to see there okay that that's just a given nothing more than that but otherwise all you have ever wanted to learn is there okay so i will leave you with this today uh, it's called you can look at the website there i'll probably share it with the with with bvj science center you can also pick it up or focus on uh, this on google it's called the millennium problems okay there are seven unsolved problems in mathematics most of them are conjunctures that means something somebody has already said but we do not have a proof for it that's a conjuncture in mathematics and uh, there are seven of them now i'll give you the reason why you have to solve this reason number 1 that just proves how powerful your mathematical thinking is okay reason number 2 it gives you a million dollars if you solve it okay this these seven problems if you solve them even one of them it will give you a million dollar that's the challenge that has been put there there are some institutes which have actually doubled the price from a million to two but overall if you can solve even one of those seven basic problems you will be able to become a millionaire all it takes is a few years of efforts and i could say if i have put it mathematically 10000 hours of concentrated effort if you can put into this i am sure one of you here is going to win a fields medal for india and also become a millionaire before most of your friends can get out of graduation okay hope that was interesting for you guys and uh, i would like to thank all of you for your patience and thank bvj science center for giving me this opportunity again and again to stay connected with my roots where i started off my journey as a mathematician as a physicist and now as a mathematician and also thank uh, mr geek for creating such a wonderful algorithm where it helps me prepare this particular lecture okay with ease you won't believe i created this entire lecture in 45 minutes okay that's the beauty of mathematics and that is all i'm trying to tell you it's not that uh they had given me the whole flow but they give me all the content that i can actually put it in a nice flow to play around all right hope you have enjoyed this entire journey of mathematics and trust me work on your basics of mathematics the simplest way to work on your basics of mathematics is to always go back to your fundamentals where did you learn that particular concept relook at it and redo the things once again so that you will understand them in a very simpler manner as you grow older right even trigonometry which was very very difficult in grade 9 becomes very simple when you are in grade 12 because now you understand how to play around it so give yourself some time and then understand the basics once you are strong in the basics okay all other complex mathematical operations they are just mathematical operations 
you will be able to solve them comfortably right so that is how you move from real world to the world of imaginary numbers wish you all a very happy journey thank you thank you thank you shri darwan sir it was a inspiring talk from you about beautiful equations that uh, uh, that are applied in the real world and i request professor k s natar sir to conclude the session yeah thank you uh, ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಘುನ್ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಹುಡುಗರಿಗೆ ಒಂದ್ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ಮೆಡಲ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಏನು ಅಂತ ಗೊತ್ತಿಲ್ಲ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ಮೆಡಲ್ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ಮೆಡಲ್ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ನೀವು ಸಾಕಷ್ಟು ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಇನ್ ಮೆನ್ಶನಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ಮೆಡಲ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಿ ಯು ಕಿಡ್ ಟೆಲ್ ದಮ್ ವಾಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ಮೆಡಲ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆರ್ ದೇರ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಹೂ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಒನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ಮೆಡಲ್ ಯು ನೋ ದಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಯು ಯು ಮಂಜುಲ್ ಟೆಲ್ ದಮ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ಮೆಡಲ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ Okay, before uh, going to Field Medal, a small story about why Nobel is not given to mathematics. Thanks. <laughs> All right. So, uh, there are two stories here. And uh, one, of course, you have to take it with a pinch of salt. The other one is reality. Uh, mathematics is not a pure subject uh, per se, like a pure science, where uh, you can give a Nobel Prize for it. Nobel typically is given for pure sciences. That's the reason why Nobel is not given for psychology, those kind of subjects. It's always given for medicine or chemistry or economics. which are pure applications and they have direct implications for day to day people right so or for a common man now uh, mathematics does not have that kind of a direct flair where it can solve uh, problems for common man directly that's the reason uh, why or, nobel, uh, nobel probably probably uh, nobel didn't know that uh, mathematics has so much of impact on society true true true, true. Uh, the, we are talking about 120 years ago right so yeah, nobel yeah, had yeah. his limitations and then he worked with it so today the nobel committee can probably relook at it but of course once the will is made it's made so that is where it is so we need to honor what nobel started off with so that that's is. the reason that why it's not given but in order to compensate for that in order to appreciate the beauty of uh, contributions of all the uh, great minds to mathematics there is this uh, medal which is instituted by uh, i forgot the institute right now it's not striking but there's a medal the, the fields medal is equivalent to a nobel nobel medal for uh, mathematics right so it's actually much more uh, paying that is the uh, nobel probably gives you 2 million fields medal gives you 4 million dollars so yeah. that way uh, fields actually is much more richer than uh, nobel prize itself if you win uh, fields medal you probably have a lot of money uh, to actually spend to go and do uh, whatever other part of mathematics you want to do so fields medal has that advantage and in india we have manjul bargav who recently won the fields medal for uh, solving one of the conjunctures and i think uh, he was working on fermat's one of the ideas on that so what happens here is that there are a lot of problems in the world that remain unsolved they are probably in the form of conjecture somebody just made a statement and it's just there and nobody has tried to prove or disprove it so those are the seven problems that you can do uh, you can pick one of them and solve so once you uh, have a solution for it and it will be reviewed peer reviewed by across the world people are going to tear it apart left right and center be ready with this mathematicians are not easy people to play with okay so but uh, there are some of the genius minds in the world therefore if they approve that your solution is really somewhere close to you know what what the world is looking for then you have an opportunity to win that fields medal okay and there are mathematicians who have rejected the fields medal also okay <laughs> rothendick is one of them rothendick did not take the fields medal he just left so you need to understand that uh, mathematicians have that that frame of mind for them yeah. they do math like the title said for the love of mathematics it's not for fields medal okay but you guys yeah. have a motive if if money is the motivator for you then fields medal is the thing that you should go to very simple thank you sir can we take yes, can we take some questions as we uh, as we have time sure 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 we can participants can unmute themselves and ask a question or post it in the chat we would answer it definitely if i can if i know anything i'll answer so that is the beauty of mathematics so i can always say i don't know <laughs> any questions or would still be good not an issue yes students yaar there are students in kelta iro yaar there are like kelta iro teachers even teachers can ask questions if they are listening
ಈಗ ಅನ್ ಅನ್ಸಾಲ್ವ್ಡ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ಸ್ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಘವನ್ ಸೈಂಗ್ ಎ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ ಬುಕ್ ಐ ಇಸ್ ರೆಫರಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಅಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಿ ಅಲ್ತ್ ಆಫ್ ನೋಸ್ ದಟ್ ದಿ ಫ್ಲೈಯಿಂಗ್ ಸರ್ಕಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಫಿಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಫ್ಲೈಯಿಂಗ್ ಆ ಪುಸ್ತಕದಲ್ಲೂ ಸಹ ಡೇ ಟು ಡೇ ಇವೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ನ ಬೇಕಾದಷ್ಟು ಡೇ ಟು ಡೇ ಇವೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ನ ತಗೊಂಡು ಅದನ್ನ ಅನಲೈಸ್ ಮಾಡೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಸೈಂಟಿಫಿಕ್ ಆಗಿ ಅನಲೈಸ್ ಮಾಡೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಮ್ಯಾಥಮೆಟಿಕಲ್ ಆಗಿ ಅನಲೈಸ್ ಮಾಡೋದಕ್ಕೆಲ್ಲ ಪ್ರಯತ್ನ ಪಟ್ಟು ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಕೂಡ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ನಂಬರ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಹವ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬೀನ್ ಗಿವನ್ ದಿರ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ ಆನ್ಸರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಕನ್ವಿನ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ಸರ್ಸ್ ಬೈ ದಿ ಸೈಂಟಿಸ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ಓಪನ್ ಎಂಡೆಡ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೊ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಎ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ ಕೆನ್ ಗೋ ಥ್ರೂ ಅಂಡ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಫೈಂಡ್ ಔಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇವತ್ತಿನ ದಿವಸ uh you you don't need to make so much of uh, research uh yaw do solve agide yaw solve agilla problems so nadik because now they are available so you can easily you can easily take them and uh, nimma field yaw do anta nodkolbodu nimma field nalli work madadike ankura ide ivattin divasa hagagi in in the in the course of this uh, search probably you will be learning a lot more that's it again my request to some of your great minds would be that if you can solve the bangalore traffic problem it is not <laughs> trust me that's a realistic problem we are all facing and we've been working on it so i had a couple of proposals uh, you know myself where i was thinking that you should make bangalore a traffic uh, signal less uh, thing that is one thing that would solve and Maybe. Uh, Maybe. fundamentally there's a lot of education that you need to do but uh, mathematically you can solve that problem right ಮಿಲಿಯನ್ ಡಾಲರ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಮಿಲಿಯನ್ ಡಾಲರ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ಇದು ಬ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಲೂರ್ ಟ್ರಾಫಿಕ್ ಇನ್ ಸಾಲ್ವ್ ಮಾಡುವಂತದ್ದು ಅಂತ ಅನ್ಸುತ್ತೆ ಮೇಬಿ ದಿ ಸಿಟಿಸನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಮೋರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ because we will be very happy to solve these problems and there are a number of people who have been trying to do this that's exactly. nice yeah because See, one, of the, one of the key things about solving a traffic problem in bangalore is a road will be named after you so trust me it's worth it <laughs> <laughs> that's nice so thank you sridagun nim bikavurge gottilde hodre idu bahusha standing on the shoulders of giants bage na ond erad maatugalu helbodu eno anta anusutte because this is one unique thing that you did uh, probably introducing probably is to 1000 reach aitha 1850 i did 800 ah let them know uh what is this about and how many people you have introduced and how many different ideas you have introduced uh through the social media because social everything is ellaru phone ittkondu nortta irthare kaliyodik prayatna padta irthare enadru agli ad kaliyodik anta avarge kaliyodikke inta opportunity ide ennadu one gothagbeku and both altaf may be able to tell us uh which are the good sites in science and mathematics so that uh students can always refer to or go to uh, if they are interested uh, my my suggestion also would be that for bvj science center and also national college website you could yeah. probably host host some of these links yeah. you know for people to uh, click and then go from there because sure. Sure. one of sure. the one of the biggest challenges with google is that there is too much of information <laughs> on the on the place <laughs> that's See, it uh, i'll tell you where i'm coming from uh, if you come to uh, our nambarnagar website what we've also done is for teachers of uh, grade 1 uh, all the way up to grade 10 when they are teaching science concepts hmm. uh, or mathematics concepts they don't know what kind of videos that can be used that is available on the youtube they have to spend a lot of time to go and do that and i used hmm. to do this for my own teaching so yeah. i have actually listed them grade wise and given all the youtube links which is all free people can just go click there and see what is the video corresponding hmm. to a mathematical concept that can be used in the class Mm. So I'll talk about science if, if you can do that even for uh, pu students what yeah. are the, see uh, there is a whole history of mathematics available on youtube made by yes. bbc yeah okay there's That's a whole history of science and of course david attenborough's uh, you know I, i would say if there is something bigger than nobel you need to you need to give this guy that that particular medal yes i know i know that's okay. right david attenborough has given us every that is what i was telling most of the teachers we cannot create a content more than what david attenborough has done in his videos mm-hmm. and most of these videos are freely available on the internet on the internet. please use it in your classrooms to make the entire journey enjoyable for the student 
okay if you guys need i can actually help uh, you know do a small teacher training program where teachers can have a discussion about how to get these resources for their classroom Now that that's very nice that's very yeah. nice we, we will certainly sir, sir, all of that we have already done with krvp also the resource management thing when we were there at krvp that is something that we have done so I we should be able to you know uh, make uh, use of this work that we have done and benefit everybody in the world uh, that that's that's my fundamental philosophy in life which is social right. well being uh, everyone has to have equal opportunity see i am not a guy who believes in equality i know that each one are created different for a reason but i am a person who strongly believes that every student every person in the world should have equal opportunities that's it what they do with the opportunity is left to the individual mm. but everyone should we should never deny someone an opportunity because they are probably in the rural side or because they are not in national college <laughs> yeah, i know the the people in national college we are privileged trust me i have been the privileged myself i have had a very easy walk because i had a certificate which said i am a student of national college makes a lot of sense there nice I'm nice sure, i'm i'm sure uh, the this batch which is here you will understand this if you uh, you know in the later stage of your life when you go back some of your bosses in the companies you can actually talk to them if they are from bangalore they will be from national college <laughs> it's a nice tribute to national college sri raghavan that's so always, nice always. i've always uh, think see there there are two things that i've noticed either they are from vijay high school <laughs> and national college so from vijay high school they come to national college from national college they go rule the rest of the world <laughs> so it's a very simple part yeah. here i could i could proudly say that i i am not a vijay high school product i came from sheshadipuram boys okay and then uh, had the greatest opportunity of my life spending 5 years at national college jayanagar with yeah. some of the best teachers the world could ever produce okay <laughs> and i've had a great time with that and i'm still having a great time i'm still on the board of studies for national college and uh, trying to see what best i can do a bit of uh, <laughs> my contribution to the school back yeah altaf altaf i think sampath kumari ma'am joined us yeah yes, that's right uh, uh, principal of pu college wonderful having you uh, mr shri raghavan thank you ma'am and it, uh, we are really proud that you are a student of national college Me and too. i'm i'm also uh, proud that i'm a student of national college <laughs> <laughs> we are really proud of you you are doing so well in the field of mathematics now i have always been wondering why mathematics is uh, made so difficult in school, school level i've always wondered okay. is there any way that you know is there any solution for that because because it's made difficult right from the schooling yes i don't know how it should be made simple or i don't know how it should be taught right Exactly. so that it should be made interesting okay just like language how easy they can learn their languages they they should learn the mathematics also then so, probably okay when they come to higher classes they will learn mathematics with lot of pleasure ipudu the kadle aagibidide adu illa ivaga now that is what we are trying to do through number nagar also we are trying to make sure that maths becomes a day to day experience for them it's not something uh, you know a new start new you know hosda you know kaliyod alla it's not a new language sorry it is your school mother tongue adre yav yav school level alli maartta idiri avaga now we are starting from kindergarten kindergarten andre we start from kindergarten we go all the way up to 10th sorry ma'am how can you cater to all the schools including government schools adu <laughs> that is a challenge that we are trying to face right now andre yen aagtide you cater to only part of the uh, uh, this one uh, so the part of the uh, uh, schools <laughs> see mathematically mathematically huh. with the limitation of the number of people i have i can only reach some number of people okay and uh, with the help of organizations like the bvj science center the krvp okay or the national college programs that you do is when we will be able to reach to multiple teachers see the most important thing here is to reach to the teacher if the teachers are trained on how to look at mathematics in a fun way then teaching becomes more interesting and learning automatically translates into a pleasurable experience if the teacher starts saying that oh today this concept is going to be very difficult so pay attention then half the students have lost interest in that instead if the teacher can go and say look i'm going to share the love of mathematics for you today and there are beautiful ways in which you can learn this you have taken the child by a lot of confidence the student needs the confidence to know that this is very simple and this is very natural 
See, mathematics is very natural to all of us. We all have that part of intelligence. It's the intelligence of reasoning. It's very natural to all of us. But somewhere in the way we teach, the way we talk, we have put certain barriers into the minds of the people. And also somewhere, you know, some of the maths teachers. I would blame this on the maths teachers for now, uh, because we felt <laughs> that we had to stay. See, now yellow on the pedestal, mel kutko be kon theeli. Non mathiro dalla thumba kasta nimga agal laano dunna thambuti the. At the first hill, konde start mara do. Exactly. So, see, namke when I started off electronics, right? I started electronics with Natraj sir. Okay. <laughs> and understanding your thevenin's theorems and norton's theorems they were not simple for people like me who came from state board trust me okay but it was rr sir and natraj sir okay and then uh, we had uh, clp sir who was uh, not not clp you were arvi sande arvi arvi sir ma sande idru avaru he actually made it so simple andre ee concept andre ide ee concept na ee tara sulbha artha maadkobodu anta See that is what we had when we were learning. Nobody, including KRVP, of of course we had KSRP sir for mathematics. Uh, may his soul rest in peace. He made mathematics so beautiful for me when he was solving a four by four matrix on the you know board. You you just fall in love with the way he does it. That that makes a lot of difference for someone who is looking at learning maths for the first time. Correct. Other important, it's the personality of the educator that makes the subject interesting. Yeah, subject true. by nature yeah. is just there. Yeah. See, like mathematics is like English or Kannada; it's just a language. Correct. The, That's the teacher has to make it very interesting. He taught so. No, no, no. Iga, no, no, no. Iga, hege English the heli texta na ganastai the hege how to make it simple hege mad bohdu na jana bhavya na ma next speaker ro that one mala Vishnuvat will be able to tell us. Uh, how to make English learning simple and interesting and fun. She is on the, yes, she has a, 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 a screen. Uh, Namaskara, Madam Vanmala. Namaskara. <laughs> Namaskara. Namaskara. Uh, I'm so happy that uh, you have joined us after a long time, after a very, yes. very long time. My pleasure. Uh, My pleasure yeah. all the way. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, uh, Sri Raghavan, Thank you very much. Thank you very much for all the uh, the effort that you have taken and Sankar's uh, information. Kotiya makkale ke hege mathematics hege tumba simple lagi ro ite simple lagi ro jonne hege na munde tagun hogbe kono adar bage interesting lagi ni ni gagle hele gya. And this is just a beginning. I know uh, we can always uh, uh, sit together, work out. Yen manadi ke sadhya namma makkale ke mathematics na hege teach manadi ke sadhya na dunna. Bhusha, we will discuss it later again. Matte, matte, bheti agana. We know this number Nagar and BB Jagdi Science Center have a few things in common, and so we can always sit together and. Uh, but, yeah. Thank you, thank, thank you, you Sri Nagar. Uh, uh, very nice. Uh, I, yeah. I will sit through. So all yeah. the best and. Namgi, uh, online the classes we did not arrange, but the webinar arrange, but the one the tumba mukhya deno thedre. काफी बिस्कुट इन कर चुकी ला बच्चे वसूल मार रखे हैं कोविड आज में ले निम्मा 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 मने के लिए नहीं नहीं हुई क्या बोल यह काफी कर दो टी कर दो बिस्कुट तो तीन निम्दे बिस्कुट तो निम्दे काफी केला तो केला कर मात्रा ना हो सो आगे की ना आई थिंक डॉक्टर वन मला विल टेक ओवर या Thank you, madam. Thanks for uh, joining us. Okay. Sure, Madla, Nane. I'll take uh, the privilege to introduce you first. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, an acclaimed academic and uh, translator, Dr. Vish Vanamala Vishwanath, taught English language and literature over the past four decades in premier institutes in Bangalore, such as Indian Institute of Science. Regional Institute of English, Bangalore University, and Azim Premji University. Deeply engaged with various facets of Kannada culture, Dr. Vanamala Vishwanath anchored the Kannada news on Doordarshan for nearly a decade. She also worked on honorary. Uh, she also worked as an honorary director at the Center for Translation Sahitya Academy. She has translated and introduced several well-known Kannada writers. And um, 
the life of harish chandra uh, her uh, uh, translation of a medieval kannada poetic classic is uh, in the murthy classical library of indian series is a landmark publication dr vishwanath's translation of indira bai the first social novel in kannada published by oxford university press in 2019 is yet another milestone in presenting the literature treasures of kannada to a global readership this a uh, novel in english has just received the best translation award from kuempu bhasha bhaskara pradhikara government of karnataka this was a little introduction about uh, professor vanwala vishwanath ma'am over to you thank you thank you very much one one day one bhasha na add madbodu adu helidre she was also in nati college joining for some time and yes ನನಗೂ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಯಾಕೆಂದ್ರೆ ನಿಮ್ದು ಎಂತ ಒಂದು ಒಂದು ಹಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಯುನೋ ಪಾಸಿಟಿವ್ ಹಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಇರುವಂತ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರಿನ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಮಾರ್ಕ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಷನ್ ನೀವು ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ನನಗೂನು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಇದ್ದೇ ಕೇವಲ ಎರಡೇ ವರ್ಷ ಇದ್ದಿದ್ ನಾನು ಆದ್ರೂ ಕೂಡ ಆ ಎರಡು ವರ್ಷದಲ್ಲೇ ನನಗೆ ಎಷ್ಟೋ ವಿಷಯಗಳನ್ನ ಮಾಡೋದಕ್ಕೆ ನಂಗೆ ಈಗ್ಲೂ ನೆನ್ಪಿರೋದು ಶಂಕರ್ ನಾಗ್ ಅವರು ಒಂದು ಇಂಟರ್ವ್ಯೂ ನ ನಮ್ಮ ಹುಡುಗರ ಕೈನಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾಡಿಸಿದ್ದು ಈಗ್ಲೂ ನೆನ್ಪಿ ಹೈಲೈಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈ ಕರಿಯರ್ ಇನ್ ಇದು ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಹಾಗೆ ಒಂಥರ ಫುಲ್ ಆಡಿಟೋರಿಯಂ ಫುಲ್ ಆಗ್ಬಿಟ್ಟಿತ್ತು ಅದು ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ತುಂಬಾನೇ ಒಂದ್ ರೀತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಎಲ್ಲ ರೀತಿಯ ಚಟುವಟಿಕೆಗಳಿಗೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಪ್ರೋತ್ಸಾಹ ಕೊಟ್ಟು ಬರೀ ಅಕಾಡೆಮಿಕ್ ಮಾತ್ರ ಅಲ್ಲದೇನೆ ನಾನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಾ ಕರಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಅಥವಾ ಕೋ ಕರಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ಗುನು ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಇದು ಕೊಟ್ಟು ಒತ್ತು ಕೊಟ್ಟು ಒಂದ್ ರೀತಿಯ ಆಲ್ ರೌಂಡ್ ಡೆವಲಪ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಮುಖ್ಯ ಅಂತ ಅನ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ನೀವು ಅದರಿಂದ ನನ್ಗೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ತುಂಬಾ ಸ್ಕೋಪ್ ಇತ್ತು ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಬೆಳೆಯೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಅದನ್ನ ನೆನೆಸ್ಕೊಳ್ತಾನೆ ನನ್ನ ಮಾತು ಶುರು ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀನಿ ಸೊ ಡಿಯರ್ ಬಾಯ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಗರ್ಲ್ಸ್ ಗರ್ಲ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಬಾಯ್ಸ್ ಯಂಗ್ ಮೆನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿಮೆನ್ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಬಾಯ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಗರ್ಲ್ಸ್ ಅಂದ್ರು ಒಂದೊಂದ್ ಸಲ ತಪ್ಪಾಗ್ಬಹುದು ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಯಂಗ್ ಮೆನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿಮೆನ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತೀನಿ ಯು ನೋ ದ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೇಶನ್ ಟುಡೇ ಈಸ್ ಹೌ ಟು ಲರ್ನ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಅದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಮಾತಾಡಿ ಅಂದ್ರು ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ನಾ ಹೇಳ್ದೆ ಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಹೌ ನಾಟ್ ಅನ್ನೋದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆನು ಹೇಳ್ಬೋದಪ್ಪ ಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಅದನ್ನು ಹೇಳ್ತೀನಿ ಅಂತ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ನಾಟ್ ನ ಬ್ರಾಕೆಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹಾಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಹೌ ನಾಟ್ ಟು ಲರ್ನ್ ಅನ್ನೋದನ್ನ ಸೊ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ಒನ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಇವತ್ತು ನಂದು ಏನಪ್ಪಾ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಕನ್ವಿನ್ಸ್ ಯು ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಪರ್ಸ್ಯೂಡ್ ಯು ಟು ಡೂ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಒನ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಯು ಯುನೋ ಆಸ್ ಅ ಲರ್ನರ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಟೇಕ್ ರೆಸ್ಪಾನ್ಸಿಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಲರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಬ್ಸೊಲ್ಯೂಟ್ಲಿ ಟ್ರೂ ವಿತ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜಸ್ ಯಾಕೆಂದ್ರೆ ಅದೊಂಥರ ಭಾಷೆ ಹೇಗೆ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಕನ್ನಡದಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ಗಾದೆ ಮಾತು ಗೊತ್ತು ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಆ ಹಾಡ್ತಾ ಹಾಡ್ತಾ ರಾಗ ಅಂತ ಕೇಳಿದ್ರು ಸೊ ಹಾಡ್ ಬರ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಹಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಅಲ್ವಾ ಹಾಡಿ ಹಾಡಿ ಹಾಡ್ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಹಾಡ್ ಹಾಡ್ತಾ ಹಾಡ್ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಕರೀತಾರ ಆತರ ಭಾಷೆ ಕೂಡ ಆ ರೀತಿಯ ಒಂದು ಆ ಆರ್ಟ್ ಒಂದ್ ಕಲೆ ಅದು ಸೊ ಆ ಕಲೆಯನ್ನು ಕೂಡ ಇದ್ರ ತರನೇ ನಾವು ಕರಗತ ಮಾಡ್ಕೋಬೇಕು ಅದನ್ನ ನಮ್ ಕೈಯಲ್ಲಿರೋ ಒಂದು ಸೋರ್ಸ್ ಅದು ಅನ್ನೋದ್ ರೀತಿ ಅದನ್ನ ಅದ್ಮೇಲೆ ಒಂದು ಸ್ವಾಧೀನ ಬೇಕು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಮಾಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಬೇಕು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಾವು ಅಷ್ಟು ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಗಮನ ಕೊಟ್ಟು ಮಾಡ್ತೇವೆ ಸೊ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಒನ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಮೇಕ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಟು ಸೇ ದಟ್ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ಟೇಕ್ ರೆಸ್ಪಾನ್ಸಿಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಅನ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಲರ್ನರ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಲರ್ನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಲರ್ನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮೋರ್ ಸೋ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಟ್ರೂ ಫಾರ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ and it's more true for languages and uh, english too so what i propose to do is to begin with uh, an, uh, an, uh, just an overall plan you
uh, what is learning and how what is involved in language learning and then i'll go on to talk about what does it mean to learn english in a multilingual context like uh, india and then the last part of it will go into uh, some kind of a detailing on uh, what is it that you should be doing if you want to be an active learner of english right uh, because why do i have to go to the basics don't we all know what we mean uh, by language but very often uh, as krishna kumar this very eminent educationist uh, has pointed out so uh, if i ask you uh, what is language communication tool anta helpurti kan muchkondo mechanical age ishte namge but uh, language is not only a tool of communication uh, because defining language as a means of communication adre eshtu habit aagutide andre we often forget its usefulness as a means to think and react to things okay. so because we use language for uh, to do various kinds of things for instance uh, as children uh, you have often seen you may have seen children talking to themselves you know first of all they direct their own activities munche id maarbittu nan aamel adru hogtini aamel allinda id hege you know directing their own activities and also if as parents for instance uh, you know the, they direct the child's activities and as you grow up you try to direct you know your friend's activities your uh, you know classmates activities and as teachers they are always busy trying to direct what students should be doing so language is used you know for this kind of a purpose for uh, you know play playing activities and you know uh, explaining things to represent life itself then for imagining things imagining a world that is not there but which you want to uh, you know uh, give a certain kind of a body to then in uh, for inquiring and reasoning so all these uh, you know activities uh, are conducted in and through language in human life and because of this language is a very flexible medium there's not you know it's not a rigid thing it really has to be a uh, very very flexible and flowing so that it helps us to come to terms with our world and the world around us is not always a predictable planned you know a kind of an affair uh, you meet up with uh, all kinds of situation all kinds of people all kinds of events quite unexpected so then how do you come to terms with these things how do you negotiate your way through uh, a life you know a world which is uh, not always predictable you know you go help her la e thingin marana ashtetra hatisbodappa kai support kotkondu amel nive hatbeko yaru bandu hatsakagala athara bhashanal kuda iga on salpa helkodbodu but adara because you have to you'll be meeting new situations you will need to have it at your fingertips without anybody's help so in this way you will see that language shapes the child's personality because the child lives and grows in the environment that language uh, creates so in another way of uh, you know uh, to more formally uh, we can go to the next slide now uh, what do we use language for right now what are the functions of language so uh, i'm i'm kind of trying to say the same thing that i said in a more formal language here using language to get things done instrumental use regulatory to control others interactional to communicate with others personal as a form of expression you know if i am a poet and if i am moved by let's say the sunset or sunrise then you know and what are my feelings what kind of meanings do i want to convey adikella bhashe namge you know is the medium then for heuristic this would be a very important function of language as for a students like you are concerned what does it mean to say heuristic heuristic andre to learn and to discover to discover and learn right that is for the purposes of education for the purposes of learning uh, language becomes uh, extremely important imaginative and representation okay now can we move to the next slide please 
So uh, language is at the intersection then of communication, which means in, you know, interpersonal communication, cognition, because that even as a child, you know, you make sense of the world through language, right? Making sense, so that is cognition, right? And then that happens in a particular culture, a certain situation, a social context. So language brings these three things together and it happens, you know, as an event in at the intersection of these three. But it doesn't mean that it's simply, you know, a very uh, simple event, but there is also in a question of identity. Languages, uh, are very close to our uh, personalities, to our hearts, to our minds, you know. So uh, that's why uh, Tagore, you know, says a language is not like an umbrella or an overcoat that can be, uh, you know, borrowed by uh, unconscious or deliberate mistake. It is a living skin itself. You know, it's an extension of us, right? Uh, you will kind of... Uh, uh, know, know, know this, when you go outside Karnataka, if you're a Kannada speaking person, the moment uh, you know, you hear uh, Kannada speakers outside, right? Uh, you, you're you Romanchana agate, right? Kannada keelidhar, Kannada dhandi nachege. Hey, yadhi kira agate? Andhra adhu namke ashtu akmeya vadadhu. Namma identity ke adhu bhala mukhya adhu. Hagagi bhaashe anadhu Otherly, there's a lot of cultural politics also involved because we are invested in that as a phenomenon. Okay, next slide, please. Therefore, all I want to, the point I want to make is that language is a very complex cultural uh, phenomenon and it is, uh, it's a specialized skill as Steven Pinker says, uh, which develops in the child spontaneously. How do we get language and the There are uh, different views and different theories about how we get language, how we learn language. So there's one school of thought which says that uh, if you want to learn uh, English, you have to know the grammar, the spelling, the vocabulary, this, that, everything, and beforehand, and then you, you know how to speak. Whereas uh, there's another school which says language is something that happens spontaneously. So Steven Pinker is one uh, theorist who says language is an instinct, you know, it's an instinct which therefore you don't have to be so consciously learning it, right? So with, without, uh, it develops in the child spontaneously without conscious effort or formal instruction. Class al kursi, hing madu, hing helo, hing bari, Stephen Pinker argues that it is an instinct. It is uh, deployed, it is used without awareness of its underlying logic. It is qualitatively the same in every individual and is distinct from more general abilities to process information. On Ritinali, the Chomsky, Anoba linguist, Stephen Pinker, Mate N.S. Prabhu, Bengur Noru, you know, all of them have argued that it is something that is subconsciously acquired, right? Therefore, let us move to the next slide and see. Now there is uh, Oscar Wilde is a, a great favorite of mine because he speaks truths about everything in such a you know funny kind of way. Uh, education is an admirable thing, he says, but it is well to remember from time to time that nothing that's worth knowing can be taught. Right? So, which means what? Kalisiddu vidyala, kalitadu vidya na matim kailer thera kannada kali. And the and passive you may not, you know, learn much. 
Therefore, what is taught is not what is learned. And uh, hence, the thrust is more on self-learning, right? Learning on one's own. This is the English class of Prati, Varda Nalak class Aro Hogi hundred twelve standard Salisagi, Tamgia, Tam Kelsey Kestubeko, Ashtonauru, Health Conde Vitirta, Yaru Hill for the name. So Henkel's Coltare, class at Banmelu Naviata Kesto Salakaria Kagirala, our boroughs to fluent Sinurana Anamge. Adiatic Hage, Anta Prashna Kel Kondaga. This is what is, uh, you know, uh, the truth about language learning and the theories, and I, my vote is with these theories, right? So uh, uh, can I just, uh, yeah, Illi um, Inan Math Helbeko? Can we go back to the previous one, please? Previous, yeah, Illi Inan Math Hilbe. Samane now on the classroom context, the Li, Yao the now on the it's a competitive venture, Kalio the Namge. Aun Gintan and Jasti Marks Barbeko, Ul Gintan and Hetu grades Sigbeko, Atho Hetu compliments Sigbeko, and on the competitive I would say, but it's possible to think of learning as a cooperative adventure you know and as a group as a team we can uh, you know learn better and uh, that is the uh, that's another thing we need to remember and the one more aspect is learning by doing right so next slide please yeah so uh, what are what are these theories about language learning what have they said I'm, why am I bringing language learning theories to talk to you about this, Sandra? I have to convince you, right? I have to persuade you that what I'm saying is not just, uh, you know, my thoughts or my opinions, but it is backed by a whole tradition of research. So, according to this particular, this this line of uh, inquiry, this line of thinking, language is best learned in authentic contexts. That is where language is naturally you know, used to communicate. It's not a created artificial situation, but a natural situation. That is when you learn it best only. No, no, it, language is best learned in conjunction with content. While learning science, while learning history, while learning commerce, and, uh, the subjects are taught through language. And you're picking up a lot of language, you know, in conjunction with the subject. And that is a very, very powerful way of picking up the language. Therefore, um, Prabhu argues that in the context of language learning, if your focus should not be on language, it looks very paradoxical. But you, you have to, if you can focus on the meaning, you know, of our the subject matter or idea or content, then if the mind is engaged in that, language naturally follows, right? That is the argument. And language is best learned when learners feel it is relevant for them. It is important for their life. It makes a difference to their lives. So English bage salpa adenna na wo hechge ano relevance na establish madbe kaigla because nimge gurto. English right? So other than social prestige language kudato. about relevance, there can't be much doubt. Okay? And language is best learned by using it in real life tasks. Railway book encounter for the fill up on form for that, fill up Madakutir Beko. On the library, the conform for the application form. Other Mada Gotirbeko. So, Ivella real life tasks, the Libhashena Balskolo Hagen. 
And one last important point about language learning is that um, languages are best learned in what are called communities of practice. It is always in local contexts and groups of people that, you know, uh, uh, that use particular forms and discourses of language to achieve particular ends. What do we mean by that, Andre? You are commerce students, they one group. Then you must sell a new combined study in a mark for the spira, ether bella. So our class, our context, the leap, Hashena, Undu, Ibato, E concept of Patamadake, Patamata in Nano. Other Baker, the vocabulary, help for this parameter. Other than the even the contextual again of Hashena, cult contra, Hage cult polo, Hakal polo, the Mulkane, and Hashenam Gehetu, Namali. These are some of the um, main uh, arguments for uh, or when uh, language learning happens. Now, there's one more aspect that we have to focus on, and that is uh, next, next slide, please. Now, where are we learning English? So, and what is the social context in which we are learning? Uh, English is no longer a foreign language. official it is considered as one of the many Indian languages today. Right? Uh, Indian English is a, considered as a legitimate variety of English. American English Australian English Indian English globally variety it's a dialect of English. which is a very heartening thing. When I was a student, uh, that was not the case. We tried and tried, uh, you know, uh, our best to speak English like the English people. But today there is no need for that because uh, English is the lingua franca. What do you mean by lingua franca, Andre? Uh, when uh, a language is not your first language, that means you may be speaking Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam, Hindi, whatever language at home, and you may be speaking Hindi as an uh, you know state language, but you're in a context, let's say in a corporate world, for instance, where there are there are people speaking different mother tongues, but they are together on a project, you know, in a kind of a corporate context where uh, you know they have to be in communication with each other and uh, take this project forward. Anthakade. They accept English as the other language through which trade and commerce and day-to-day -day communication can happen. So English has become, uh, you know, this kind of a, a connecting language, link language for uh, people within India and across uh, states. And often within a place like Bangalore, where there are so, you know, uh, it's so multilingual, uh, we often get by using English. So therefore, there's a whole variety of English, uh, which is uh, a locally produced, you know, variety, uh, which has become acceptable in the last uh, uh, 40 years or so. Uh, there's a much greater tolerance, much greater acceptance of Indian English as a legitimate variety. Therefore, we don't have to feel uh, self-conscious about uh, our English, right? And uh, because of this reason, uh, language learning uh, in multilingual communities is seen as uh, something. And the first two bhasha kalt komedi, amel maathadi, alve alla. Maathar tar tane bhasha improve akta hogate. Adhanda yeshtu gotti dia adhanu piya gus konde shuru maadi. It's an emergent, emergent phenomenon. understanding And it is practice-based. And it's an adaptive process.
ಅವಾಗ ನಾವು ಅದನ್ನ ಇನ್ನೊಬ್ರಿಗೆ ಹೆಂಗ್ ಹೇಳ್ಬೇಕು ಅನ್ನೋದನ್ನ ಬದಲಾಯಿಸ್ಕೊಂಡು ಮಾತಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ವೆರಿ ಫಿಕ್ಸ್ಡ್ ರಿಜಿಡ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ಅನ್ ಅಡಾಪ್ಟಿವ್ ಅಡಾಪ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ಬದಲಾಯಿಸ್ಕೊಂಡು ಇನ್ನೊಬ್ರಿಗೆ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಕೇಟ್ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆಯಾ ಇಲ್ಲೋ ಅಂತ ನೋಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ಬೇರೆ ಬೇರೆ ರೀತಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಟ್ರೈ ಮಾಡಿ ಅದನ್ನ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಕೇಶನ್ ಸಕ್ಸಸ್ಫುಲ್ ಮಾಡೋ ಅಂತ ಒಂದು ಫ್ಲೆಕ್ಸಿಬಲ್ ಆದ ಪ್ರೋಸೆಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಫೋರ್ ದ ದರ್ಸ್ ಅ ಶಿಫ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ಫೋಕಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಲರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ವೆರಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪರ್ಟ್ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ಮಲ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಆ ತರದ ನಿರೀಕ್ಷೆಗಳಿಂದ ಇವಾಗ ಏನಿದ್ರು ಒಂದು ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಫ್ಲೂಯಿಡ್ ಮಾಡ್ಲ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಏನು ಪ್ರೊಫಿಷಿಯನ್ಸಿ ಇಸ್ ಅಚೀವ್ ಟು ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ರೆಲೆವೆಂಟ್ ಕಾಂಟೆಕ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಪರ್ಪಸಸ್ ಅಷ್ಟೇನೆ ಅದಕ್ಕೇನು ಎಲ್ಲಾ ತರದ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಗೊತ್ತಿರ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂತಲ್ಲ ಅದರಿಂದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ನೆಗೋಷಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಕೊಲಾಬರೇಟಿವ್ ಏನು ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಅರ್ಥ ಆಗಿದ್ರೆ ಅವ್ರು ಕೇಳ್ಬೇಕು ನಮ್ನ ಏನ್ ಈಗೇನು ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಇನ್ನೊಂದ್ಸಲ ಹೇಳಿ ಅಂತ ಆಗ ನಾವು ಬೇರೆ ತರ ಹೇಳೋದಕ್ಕೆ ನೋಡ್ಬೋದು ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಅರ್ಥ ಆಗೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಈ ರೀತಿ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ನೆಗೋಷಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಸೊ ಎಟ್ ಅನ್ ಅದರ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಲರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಇನ್ ಮಲ್ಟಿಲಿಂಗ್ವಲ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಈಸ್ ಯುವರ್ ಎಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಟು ಯೂಸ್ ದ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ನೋ ವೆರ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಕನ್ನಡ ಆರ್ ತಮಿಳ್ ಆರ್ ತೆಲುಗು ಆಸ್ ಅ ರಿಸೋರ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ರಿಸೋರ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೊ ಹೌ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ವಿ ಯೂಸ್ ದಟ್ ಟು ಲರ್ನ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ರೈಟ್ ಯು ನೋ ಲೈಕ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದಟ್ ಕನ್ನಡ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಎನಿಮಿ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಅಲ್ವೇ ಅಲ್ಲ ರೈಟ್ ಹೌ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಕನ್ನಡ ಯುವರ್ ದ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಕನ್ನಡ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ಯು ಇನ್ ಇನ್ ಅಕ್ವೈರಿಂಗ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಗಲ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೋರ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಲೈಡ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಕುಡ್ ಯು ಗೋ ಟು ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಲೈಡ್ So the question now, uh, Mr. Altaf. Could we please go to the next slide? Hello? Ah, okay. So I guess you're able to li- hear me. And um, so now we come to the major uh, aspect of, so what should you do as a learner, right? How can you create uh, your own uh, self-learning uh, situations? What should you do? Simple, read and speak. now if you can focus on these two skills reading skill uh, and speaking skill to begin with uh, reading uh, because both both kinds of reading where uh, very focused intensive reading of a particular text in a lot of detail paying attention to every word that is intensive reading usually what we the kind of uh, uh, you know approach they take Uh, to texts in the, inside the classroom is very intensive reading but also extensive reading you know like uh, read something quickly to get the overall you know idea you know those kinds of uh, things where you kind of uh, the flow of reading becomes more important than uh, understanding every word in that text atharatha you, know, you get the gist of it you get the larger argument atharatha so uh, reading why should why should we read why is it important uh, reading offers exposure to models of good language normally now what is the the printed word uh, would have gone through some degree of uh, editing and some degree of uh, you know quality control therefore when you are looking for um, um learning uh, you know a good model form of english you what the first thing you need is exposure to english exposure to good english so reading provides you that kind of a uh, model then in for this uh, purpose you can you use uh, you know like apart from written text you can in you know, which you read you can also listen to oral texts or watch visual texts in your area of interest the enandre it should be seen as fun it's not a homework 
it's not work that is prescribed for you. It's work that you choose, right? Therefore, first of all, find out what is your area of interest. Maybe if there are two, three, you know, like let's say you're interested in cricket. And if two, three others are interested in cricket of, um, among your friends, then you form a small group, uh, you know, a cricketers group or, or a cricket, uh, you know, fans group where you, you kind of, you can focus on, let's say, a newspaper report on cricket. You can listen to the commentary, you know, of a, um, a series, uh, or you can uh, kind of, you know, uh, read up, uh, you know, or watch uh, cricket being played and then comment on it. So, like that, you choose a certain a certain um, areas of, that interest you, and then uh, read more, listen to more commentaries, and watch uh, cricket being played. So that you, the visual and the oral are matched, so that uh, they, it becomes a full-fledged experience, many-sided experience. Then, if you can establish a small group where uh, you know, like you create opportunities for speaking, right? Now, maybe you can uh, you know comment on, uh, let's say, a cricketer's uh, style of playing, or somebody can say or analyze why some, uh, you know, in this series, we kind of uh, didn't make it, you know, why did we lose this whole series, et cetera, et cetera. You can, yeah. so you use the information, insight, analysis, you get from uh, all these sources, oral, written, and visual texts. And you call out all the information, all the analysis, and throw in your own understanding and your own experience of cricket. and then make a presentation about a particular uh, aspect of cricket that you might, uh, you know, be, you might want, you, you all choose as a group. So this is one way in which, one context in which, uh, you know, you could uh, do reading and speaking in a very, uh, it's a continuum. You know, you take, it, you take in information, you take in analysis and try and make it your own and present. And maybe somebody else has a different uh, point of view. And then it, you can debate with that friend and disagree with that friend. And all of these things happen in a very uh, natural, spontaneous kind of a context. Right? Therefore, and it can happen in multiple modes. Like it can just be two people, you know, who, uh, who agree to work together on, let's say, a concept in science. So you kind of share the work and say, you read up these two texts and I'll read up this one and then let's let's understand, uh, you know, how we come to terms with it, right? Or it could be a smaller group of, let's say, six people. Or you could have, uh, depending on uh, common interest, you could have a focused group discussion, right? So these are all ways of, uh, uh, you know, creating opportunities for yourself to speak, to make presentations in English. And you could use sources like newspapers. You know, just before I, uh, this English uh, session started, uh, Dr. Sri Raghavan, I heard, uh, was uh, talking about uh, Attenborough's, uh, you know, using Attenborough's films, right? On uh, climate change and so on and so forth. So like that, you can, you know, use um, material that's on the internet. So like newspapers, short texts, podcasts. Podcast is a very, uh, uh, you know, it helps you to develop a higher level skills in English where you know how, uh, how a thought can be presented, how an argument can be made, right? And it is usually presented both in terms of content and uh, language. It is uh, spoken well, generally. You know? So you could use podcasts as a way, as an input to your own learning. Then watch TV news, right? Uh, watch short films, right? And sports commentary, uh, you know, dialogue tracks from films. So all these can form your uh, sources. And uh, today, you know, uh, technology is uh, much more accessible, uh, which was not so in, let's say, my time, right? Uh, and uh, Technology is a leveler, they say. You know, just one, uh, 
you know, smartphone is enough to get you access to so many things. But uh, technology may give you uh, access uh, uh, to the machine, but the access to the information, the access to uh, knowledge, which is called epistemic access, that is not a uh, natural process. You have to use the access given by technology to convert it into a knowledge uh, you know, channel right, for yourself. Epistemic access is something you have to create out of the uh, technology, right? So this is where how you can create uh, you know, the kind, that kind of uh, access, okay? Uh, next, uh, next slide, please. So which are the best learning uh, spaces, learning sites, right? Where can you learn English, uh, you know, in a very, now in a very, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, without any disrespect to uh, myself or teachers like me, my submission to you is um, um, often it is best learned outside the classroom because our classrooms are big places, you know, with hundreds of students. And uh, it's not humanly possible for any teacher to give you individual attention. And language learning is a very individual process. Uh, it's a first person process. I, I have to, uh, you know, uh, learn, right? On, uh, you know. So given that, um, you know, and also in the classroom, uh, one kind of, uh, English gets learned normally, and that is the most, the more formal variety of English. Whereas we need language for very different kinds of uh, functions, as we already saw in the beginning of the presentation. And therefore, I would say that th these are all the sites that you can, uh, act, you know, you can go to library where you can read some things on your own, something that that interests you, playground. Right, uh, you know, like nothing like the immediacy of the playground for spontaneously, you know, saying, doing, you know, fighting, uh, you know, uh, encouraging somebody to do, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then um, crossword puzzles, board games, right? blogs, podcasts, uh, short articles, tweets, online platforms. Then, uh, of course, the usual, you know ubiquitous, everywhere it is a marketplace. Then cultural hubs, uh, public lectures, right? And also special interest forums, uh, for, for uh, I can say, uh, like, uh, you know, on based on science, literature, law, activ you know, activism, uh, like, the, for, for instance, the farmer's uh, strike is going on just now, you know? And uh, there are activist groups which, uh, through WhatsApp, are seeking your support, your uh, you know, um, um, your active support by signature campaigns and things like that. So, do you want to be part of it? Do you want to exercise that choice? Uh, which means you have to read, uh, you know, what is the struggle about? What is a strike for? What is your stand on that particular issue? Do you know enough to make a take a stand on this issue? Now all these things you know, become so uh, uh, this, you know like there are discussion groups, newsletters, webinars. So all these things are uh, uh, all around you. These resources, and therefore, uh, if you know, if you can uh, somehow you know uh, create uh, opportunities uh, out of these contexts, which are waiting to be used. Right, then you are uh, able to, you'll be able to learn uh, English in a very intimate kind of way. Because it is, you know, like they say, there are two conditions for language learning. One is motivation, that is, you should want to learn. Right, you know, uh, we want good marks, that is an external motivation. But the Asa Ili, Volgadin the Barbek. Kalkobekon, Kalitini, Kalkoda Kasir, Aga, you know, 
half the battle is won already. So uh, that desire, that motivation to learn, if you have that, then the next thing you need is exposure, right? Uh, if you can, you know, in, in your mother tongue, what becomes available to you all around you in a natural context, uh, it is not always there in that kind of abundance or that easily uh, uh, in the case of English. Therefore, you have to uh, pay attention a certain quality of attention is very important. Uh, you know, like, say, for a child, this uh, attention comes uh, with, uh, it, you know, with birth, from birth. Therefore, the, uh, when a child is absorbed, it's a complete absorption. quality of attention, dilute second language English you have to bring back that quality of attention which a child gives uh, to the learning process. And then, because it's completely absorbed, you know, you know, but the intensity of attention is so high that the child picks up the language from that process. Then you know the so that exposure uh, is a you make uh, you make it a meaningful learning experience for yourself. Hang mar kondaga, bhashe tantane volko volud varate. Niven adena conscious sakut kondo na kalt ko tininta madle bekha gila. Adi kene I dare uh, risk a statement like this that rote learning does not help you learn a language, right? It may give you a few phrases, a few, you know, but uh, phrases, so, uh, words, so, you need a certain flexibility uh, in the in using language you know, to be a successful uh, language. So, uh, rote learning may not, is not very helpful. And I would even say that grammar is not, uh, which is grammar in the sense of knowledge about rules, right? It may help you when it comes to writing. You know, if you have written something, you have the time to revise it. When you're revising it, you know, you will know, okay, um, is, is, it is not sounding correct. Now, let me say what is the problem if you go to the teacher or grammar book or internet and Google it, you will know, okay, this, uh, you know, if it's a singular subject, it has to be a verb which has an S in it. And the you know, rules were there. But when you are speaking, what happens? Right? Uh, now that kind of knowledge of grammar is not equal to knowing the language. Knowing the language is a more spontaneous ability and a more spontaneous uh, skill. And hence, uh, and no, you know, knowledge of grammatical rules doesn't always help you in becoming a confident speaker of the language. Okay? Therefore, uh, then what helps? Antandre, uh, in doing it, in using it, right? In um, you learn the language by using the language. Yeah. That is the thing. So you should create context where you become an active learner uh, by that active self-learner. Right? Aga motivation no nimde, adik maado prayatna no nimde. Adirudu nimde adaga, nimgeralli jaya sevodo kandita. Hmm? English um, but um, with this kind of uh, you know uh, pressure to learn right um, one 
use that pressure as a positive factor in learning. And it, uh, it, it helps, it, it helps a lot in learning. Therefore, I think uh, most of you in today's context uh, have the facilities to learn. They're, they're in your own hands uh, because of the computer, internet, this kind of thing. Therefore, it's easier for you to uh, access information. And all you have to do is to form small groups of you know, interest groups friends groups and study groups where you come together and make a more uh, conscious attempt to you know use language uh, uh, the, on, the attempt is conscious the not the activity of speaking right the attempt to create the con opportunity is a conscious attempt as they and the one sala create markon mel adralli en martira nu adella new thumba natural laga so with these kinds of uh, uh, things, you can take charge of your own learning, you know, and your own learning the language. It's but it's in then that uh, language, uh, you know, becomes uh, something that you can uh, that is your own. You can make it your own. So I'll uh, stop here, and uh, of course, questions are very welcome on uh, what I have said so far. Thank you. Yeah, good morning, ma'am. Yes, good morning. I'm, uh, I'm, Uma. I'm second PUC lecture, English lecturer, ma'am. I have a question. Yes. Uh, you said language is in instinct. Yeah. And how could the second language learn instinctively? Um, we are talking, when we say it's an instinct, we are talking about a certain kind of an apparatus of the mind, right? What kind of a system do we have, right? Now, Chomsky, for instance, this theorist, uh, talks about all human beings uh, have, uh, human beings are um, marked or defined by uh, this ability to sp in speak. You know, what, ma what differentiates a human being? Homo sapiens from animals, you know, from primates, let's say, is the ability uh, of being able to speak, to use language. So it's a it's a very special, distinct human trait. Now, if you learn, if you look at a child, a two or three or four year old child, the kind of mastery of a language that the child has, right? You know, linguists are yet to describe comprehensively all the things that the child knows by way of uh, when 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 a child learn, picks up a language, you know, the child knows the pronunciation, the grammar, the usage. You know, the uh, you know, like who is saying what. Hmm? To, let me give you an example. Right now, the father comes back home. The child is playing. The you know uh, the um, toys are spread all over the house in a very random erratic way. So supposing the child, the father gets angry and says, "Whose toys are these?" The child will never say, "My nappa and thelala." Huh? Immediately, the child is able to process the information that Appa is angry. It is not a, it's not a question which demands a straightforward answer, right? So, grammar teacher na whose slippers are these? Whose shoes are these? Whose shoes are these? It's a question. Grammatically, it's a new question. That's why I'm going to ask you a question. That's why I'm going to ask you a question. That's why I'm going to ask you a question. That's why I'm going to ask you a 
ಆ ಇಂಟೆನ್ಷನ್ ಮಗುಗೆ ಎಷ್ಟು ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ಅರ್ಥ ಆಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಎರಡು ವರ್ಷದ ಮಗು ಆದ್ರೂ ಸೊ ಈ ಇಷ್ಟು ರೀತಿಯ ಒಂದು ಸೊಫಿಸ್ಟಿಕೇಶನ್ ಹೆಂಗೆ ಒಂದು ಎರಡು ವರ್ಷದ ಮಗು ಕಲ್ತ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಕಲ್ತ್ಕೊಳ್ಳುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಆಗ ಚಾಮ್ಸ್ಕಿ ಅವರು ಹೇಳೋರು ಉತ್ತರ ಏನು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಇದು ಅಹ್ ಯಾರು ಯಾರು ಕಲಿಸಿ ಬರೋ ಅಂಥದ್ದಲ್ಲ ಇದು ತಾನ ಕಲ್ತ್ಕೊಂಡಿರೋದು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಇಷ್ಟು ಈಗ ಲಿಂಗ್ ಒಂದು ನೂರ್ ಜನ ಲಿಂಗ್ವಿಸ್ಟ್ಗಳೆಲ್ಲ ಸೇರಿ ನೂರು ವರ್ಷ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಒಂದು ಭಾಷೆನ ಫೋಕಸ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಇಷ್ಟು ಸ್ಪಷ್ಟವಾಗಿ ಇಷ್ಟು ಸೆನ್ಸಿಟಿವ್ ಇದು ಏನೋ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ ಆಗಿ ಸೂಕ್ಷ್ಮಗಳನ್ನೆಲ್ಲ ಹಿಡಿದಿಡಕ್ ಕಷ್ಟ ಅಂತ ಸೂಕ್ಷ್ಮ ಒಂದು ಮೂರ್ ವರ್ಷದ ಮಗು ಇಷ್ಟು ಒಂದೇ ಇದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ಕಲ್ತ್ಕೊಂಡಿದೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಇದು ಸುಮ್ನೆ ಹೊರಗಡೆಯಿಂದ ಹೇಳ್ಕೊಟ್ಟು ಬರುವಂಥದ್ದಲ್ಲ ನಮ್ಮ ಮನಸ್ಸಿನ ಒಳಗಡೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಬ್ರೈನ್ ಒಳಗಡೆನೆ ಒಂದು ಅಹ್ ಏನೋ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಅಕ್ವಿಸಿಷನ್ ಡಿವೈಸ್ ಅಂತ ಎಲ್ ಎಡಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತೇನೆ ಒಂದು ಡಿವೈಸ್ ಇದೆ ಅಂತ ಚಾಮ್ಸ್ಕಿ ಹೇಳೋದು ಅದನ್ನೇ ಇವರು ಮುಂದುವರಿಸಿಕೊಂಡು ಈ ಪಿಂಕರ್ ಅವರು ಹೇಳೋದು ಅದೊಂದು ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಂಕ್ಟ್ ಅಂತ ಸೊ ಹೀಗೆ ನಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಂಕ್ಟ್ ಇದೆ ಭಾಷೆ ಕಲಿಯೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಈ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಂಕ್ಟು ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಅಲ್ಲೂ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡುತ್ತೆ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಅಲ್ಲೂ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡುತ್ತೆ ಅದು ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾಡಲ್ಲ ಅಂತಿಲ್ಲ ಬಟ್ ವಿ ನೀಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೋಜರ್ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ರೈಟ್ ಆ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೋಜರ್ ನಾವು ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಂಡ್ರೆ ಆ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಭಾಷೆಗೆ ಆವಾಗ ಈ ಮೈಂಡ್ ನ ಫ್ಯಾಕಲ್ಟಿ ಇದೆಯಲ್ಲ ಅದು ತನ್ನಷ್ಟು ತಾನೆ ಆಪರೇಟ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ನೀವೇನ್ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕಾಗಿಲ್ಲ ಅದೀಗಾಗ್ಲೇ ಅದು ಟ್ರೈನ್ ಆಗಿರುವಂತ ಒಂದು ಅಕ್ವಿಸಿಷನ್ ಡಿವೈಸ್ ಅದು ಅದು ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಅನ್ನೋದು ಅವರ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಂಕ್ಟ್ ಅನ್ನೋ ಅದನ್ನ ಆ ಅರ್ಥದಲ್ಲಿ from any of the participants or the teachers uh well i have a question sir <laughs> yeah madam uh, i have we haven't met actually <laughs> yeah. hope to okay yeah. Yeah. <laughs> physically when the classes start i would like you to address our students once I'll well privilege yes uh, in british english matte american english alli different uh, uh, spellings iruthe madam say for example color ge c o oh. ಕಲರ್ ಅಂತ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಕೆ ಅಂತಾನು ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಸಿ ಬದಲು ಒಂದ್ ಕಡೆ ಸಿ ಒ ಎಲ್ ಒ ಯು ಆರ್ ಯಾವ ಯಾವ್ದು ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಅಂತ ನಾವು ತಿಳ್ಕೊಳಕಾಗತ್ತೆ so who has its dollar uh, that has ruled the world uh, until now therefore uh, dollar is uh, you know uh, has more power than uh, the pound so uh, in a, you know idu one one math ide again oscar no right or wrong uh, huh? there is no right or wrong so uh, see illa. yeah i i i just make that point uh, what i'm trying to say is they they, they say a dialect with an army becomes a language anta okay <laughs> so a dialect which has this army becomes a language anta so illi sadyakke namge iga neevu computer alli hakidre alli british english american english ant kelutadu so munche iga ondu 40 varshad kelgade ee taradella sadhyane aagtirlilla i mean especially for india uh, british english was the uh, kind of model therefore uh, we always followed that model but ega uh, because of uh, the global uh, you know ascendancy of uh, the us and the us dollar uh, american english has become a lot more uh, you know prevalent therefore it is possible you can make uh, your choices right you can pick and choose and um, for instance uh, last uh, when i had to do this work for harvard university sir so, ಹರಿಶ್ಚಂದ್ರ ಕಾವ್ಯದ ಅನುವಾದ ಮಾಡಿದಾಗ ಹಾರ್ವರ್ಡ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಪ್ರೆಸ್ ನವರು ಅಮೆರಿಕನ್ ಇದೇನೆ ಸೊ ನಾವು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಬ್ರಿಟಿಷ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಟ್ರೈನ್ ಆಗಿರೋರು ಸೊ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಬ್ರಿಟಿಷ್ ಸ್ಪೆಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಬ್ರಿಟಿಷ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ಯು ನೋ ದೇ ವುಡ್ ಇಮಿಡಿಯೇಟ್ಲಿ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೊ ಇನಿಷಿಯಲಿ ಒಂಚೂರು ಮುಜುಗರ ಆಗ್ತಿತ್ತು ಇದೇನಿದೆ ಇವ್ರು ಒಬ್ಬರದೇ ನಾ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಅಂತ ಬಟ್ ದೆನ್ ಐ ರಿಯಲೈಸ್ಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅನ್ ಅಮೆರಿಕನ್ ಪಬ್ಲಿಕೇಶನ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಹಾರ್ವರ್ಡ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಪಬ್ಲಿಷ್ ಆಗೋದು ದೇ ಫೋರ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಫಾಲ್ Uh, within the purview of those uh, rules and that so hage what is very important though the point i would like to make is that uh, idralli flexibility it go but now hmm? if we are
then you could use british spelling ee tarad ondu variety ide these are the choices i have and for this purpose i'll use this anadu anadu ond arividre saaku namge we can uh, you know mix and uh, change as i said flexibility becomes a very important uh, uh, angle in language <coughs> so both are anta nu helu <laughs> both are correct depending on context you know <laughs> in english i mean bhashe meshrulige ee science meshrulu tharala navu now ellanu it depends on what we ha yekandre adu absolute alla nodi haudu bhashe one social context alli flexible ah use aguvantadu so salisagi idu tappu sari enakinta namage hechagi appropriacy correctness ginta namage appropriacy is a greater um, um value on the concept hmm? appropriate anta prashna yavudak appropriate ona prashne baruthe yaru appropriate yavudak appropriate etc so ivaga ivaru raja rao namma indian english idu writer idarana avaru kantapura pustakada ondu munnudi alli heltare we cannot write like the english people hmm? and we should not okay ಯಾಕೆಂದ್ರೆ ನಾವು ನಮ್ಮ ತರನೇ ಬರೀಬೇಕು ಇನ್ನೊಬ್ರ ತರ ಬರೀಬಾರ್ದು ನಾವು ಅನ್ನೋ ಮಾತು ಹೇಳ್ತಾರ ಅವ್ರು ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಅವರು ಆ ಕಾದಂಬರಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಬಹಳ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಆದ ಇನ್ನೋವೇಶನ್ಸ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹಂಗ್ ಮಾಡಿರೋದ್ರಿಂದಾನೆ ಅದು ಒಂದು ನ್ಯಾಷನಲಿಸ್ಟ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಆಯ್ತು ಒಂದು ಆಂಟಿ ಕಲೋನಿಯಲ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಆಗೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಸಾಧ್ಯ ಆಯ್ತು ಸೊ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಅವರು ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ತರ್ಟಿ ಏಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಬರ್ದಿತ್ತು ಪುಸ್ತಕ ಇದು ಅದು ಬ್ರಿಟಿಷ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಅಲ್ಲ ಅಮೆರಿಕನ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಮೊದ್ಲೇ ಅಲ್ಲ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ right and he has used it to tell the story of india's freedom so there's a very conscious use of indian english to make a point right namma sensibility namage non detailed namage non detailed text agitta adu kantapara now ootta idaga non detailed namage anusta ittu ittu astond detail agidru adanna non detailed ant yak karitare ಅಲ್ಲ ನಾನ್ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ ನೀವು ಎಲ್ಲ ಪದಗಳ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆಗಳು ಕೇಳಲ್ಲ ನೀವು ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಹಾ ಅಲ್ಲಿರೋ ಗ್ರಾಮರ್ ಸೆಂಟೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಇದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಕೇಳಲ್ಲ ಅನೋಟೇಶನ್ ಕೇಳಲ್ಲ ಅದ್ರಿಂದ ಸಂತೋಷ ಓದಿ ನೀವು ನಿಮ್ ಪಾಡು ಓದ್ಕೊಳ್ಳಿ ಅದನ್ನ ಅಂತ ಅರ್ಥ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಅದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಒಂದ್ ಸಣ್ಣ ಕಥೆ ಇದೆ ಆ ಇದರಲ್ಲಿ ಮೈಸೂರು ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಕಾಂತಾಪುರನ ನಾವು ಇದು ಇದ ಪ್ರಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ ಆದಾಗ ಒಂದ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೈಕ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಎಲ್ಲಾರು ಅಂಗಡಿಗಳೆಲ್ಲ ಮುಗ್ಗಟ್ಟುಗಳೆಲ್ಲ ಮುಚ್ಚಿಬಿಟ್ಟಿತ್ತು ಏನಪ್ಪಾ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಈಗ ಯಾವ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಇದು ನಮ್ ಹುಡುಗರ್ಗೆಲ್ಲ ಈ ತರ ನೀವು ಸಬ್ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡರ್ಡ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಹೇಳ್ಕೊಡೋ ಅಂತ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ನ ನೀವು ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಬುಕ್ ಮಾಡಿದೀರಾ ಅದ್ರಿಂದ ಇವರು ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಕೆಟ್ಟೋಗ್ ಬಿಡುತ್ತೆ ನೀವು ಈ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ನ ತೆಗೆದು ಹಾಕಿ ಅಂತ ರೈಟ್ ಅವಾಗ ಸಿ ಡಿ ನರಸಿಂಹಯ್ಯ ಅಂತವ್ರೆಲ್ಲಾರು ಸ್ಕಾಲರ್ಸ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಸೇರಿ ಅದನ್ನ ಡಿಫೆಂಡ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಅದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಅದರ ಸಿಗ್ನಿಫಿಕೆನ್ಸ್ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿರೋ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ನದ್ದು ಒಂದು ಸಿಗ್ನಿಫಿಕೆನ್ಸ್ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಎಲ್ಲಾನು ತುಂಬಾ ವಿವರವಾಗಿ ವಿಷಯವಾಗಿ ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ಹೇಳ್ಕೊಟ್ಟಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಹೇಳಿ ಆರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ಸ್ ಬರೆದು ಸೊ ದೇರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ಡಿಬೇಟ್ ಆನ್ ದಟ್ ಸೊ ಹಾಗೆ ಬೇರೆ ಬೇರೆ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಗಳಿಗೆ ಜಾಗ ಇದೆ ಅದನ್ನೇ ನಾನು ಮುಂಚೆ ಮೊದ್ಲಿನ ಹಾಗೆ ಈಗ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅದೇನೋ ಒಂದು ಸ್ನಬ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಆ ರೀತಿ ಒಂದು ಕೀಳರಿಮೆ ಅಥವಾ ಒಂದು ಇನ್ಫೀರಿಯಾರಿಟಿ ಕಾಂಪ್ಲೆಕ್ಸ್ ಅಂತ ಇರ್ಲೇಬೇಕಾಗಿಲ್ಲ ಈಗ ನೋ ಇಟ್ಸ್ see what the language in which i have translated raghavanka you know a 13th century text uh, is uh, you know it it is our english because i have made the english follow raghavanka i didn't make raghavanka follow english right <laughs> we are we are in that kind of a, a state and status today right where Eng- indian english is able to express a certain kind of a sensibility uh you you can break the language and reconstruct it you know to suit indian ethos and uh, hence it is a very uh, it's been accepted the world over there i don't think uh, you know there is a problem with that so we should uh, not feel diffident about uh, using indian english but one day nagutte gotta onthara indian english ant helibuttu thumba ondu you know uh, ಇದು ಅಲ್ಲ ಅದು ಅಲ್ಲ ಒಂಥರ ಒಂಥರ ಮಧ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಕ್ಕೆ ನಿಂತ್ಕೊಂಡ್ಬಿಡ್ತೀವಿ ನೋಡಿ ಆ ತರದ್ದು ಸಿ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದ ಫೆಸಿಲಿಟಿ ಇನ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ನೋ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ಆ
you know, if you want to, if you need to break that correctness and do something creative, you should know it. But for that, you should know how to use what is the correct form and the correct form. ಗೊತ್ತಿಲ್ಲ ನಾವು ಸುಮ್ನೆ ಏನೋ ನನ್ ಗೊತ್ತಿದ್ದೆ ಸರಿ ಅಂತ ನಾವು ಆರ್ಗ್ಯೂ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ನಾನು ಬಟ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟಿವ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಇನ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಬೇರೆ 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 ಕಾಂಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ಗೆ ಬೇರೆ ಬೇರೆ ತರಹ ಈಗ ಕನ್ನಡದಲ್ಲೇ ನಾವು ಮಾತಾಡ್ತೀವಲ್ವ ಆ ತರ ಸೊ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಈ ತರದ ಒಂದು ಸೌಲಭ್ಯ ಇರ್ಬೇಕು ಒಂದು ಭಾಷೆ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಅದನ್ನ ಸಮಯಕ್ಕೆ ತಕ್ಕ ಹಾಗೆ ನಾವು ಯಾರ ಹತ್ರ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತಿದೀವಿ ಅನ್ನೋ ನೋಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ಮತ್ತೆ ಯಾವ ವಿಷಯದ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀವಿ ಅದನ್ನ ಫಾರ್ಮುಲ್ ಆಗಿ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದೀವ ಇನ್ಫಾರ್ಮುಲ್ ಆಗಿ ಹೇಳ್ಬೇಕಾ ಈ ಎಲ್ಲಾ ಪ್ಯಾರಾಮೀಟರ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡು ನಾವು ಇಂಟ್ಯೂಟಿವ್ ಆಗಿ ಡಿಸೈಡ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ಈ ತರ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ತಲುಪುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ಆದ್ರೆ ಕೆಲವು ಬಗೆಯ ಗ್ರಾಮಟಿಕಲ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಕೆಲವದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಪ್ರಾಮಿನೆಂಟ್ ಆಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಈಗ ವೊಕ್ಯಾಬ್ಯುಲರಿ ಅಂತಲ್ಲಿ ತುಂಬಾ ಸ್ಪಷ್ಟವಾಗಿ ಡಿಫ್ರೆನ್ಸ್ ವೊಕ್ಯಾಬ್ಯುಲರಿ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಮತ್ತೆ ಪ್ರೊನೌನ್ಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಡೈಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ಒಂದ್ ಡೈಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಡೈಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ತುಂಬಾನೇ ಕಾಣಿಸೋ ಹಾಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಾಗೋ ಹಾಗೆ ವ್ಯತ್ಯಾಸ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಬಟ್ ಗ್ರಾಮರ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ಗ್ರಾಮರ್ ಫಾಲೋ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಯಾವ ಆ ಭಾಷೆ ಅಂತ ಅನ್ನಿಸ್ಕೊಳಕ್ಕೆ ಈಗ ಧಾರವಾಡ ಕನ್ನಡ ಮಂಗಳೂರ್ ಕನ್ನಡ ಮೈಸೂರ್ ಕನ್ನಡ ಈ ಮೂರೂ ಕನ್ನಡನೇ ಅವರಿಗೆ ಕನ್ನಡಕ್ಕೆ ಬೇಕಾದ ಇರ್ಬೇ ಇರುವ ಒಂದು ಮೂಲಭೂತವಾದ ಒಂದು ಗ್ರಾಮಟಿಕಲ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ಅದು ಕಾಮನ್ ಇದೆ ಅದು ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ಗೂ ನಿಜಾನೇ ಆದ್ರೆ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಗ್ರಾಮಟಿಕಲ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಕೆಲವದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಪ್ರಿಡಾಮಿನೆಂಟ್ ಆಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಇನ್ನೊಂದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ಅಷ್ಟು ಪ್ರಿಡಾಮಿನೆಂಟ್ ಆಗಿ ಇಲ್ಲದೆ ಇರಬಹುದು ಆ ರೀತಿ ಅದ್ರಲ್ಲೂನು ಒಂದ್ ರೀತಿಯ ಒಂದು ಸ್ಟೆಟಿಸ್ಟಿಕಲಿ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ವೇರಿಯೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಇರಬಹುದು ಮತ್ತೆ ಬಹುಶಃ ಇದನ್ನ ನಾವು ಇನ್ನೊಂದ್ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಯೋಚನೆ ಮಾಡಿ ನಾನು ಉತ್ತರ ಹೇಳ್ಬೇಕಾಗತ್ತೆ ಅಷ್ಟು ನೇರವಾಗಿ ತಕ್ಷಣಕ್ಕೆ ನಂಗೆ ಹೀಗೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಾರೆ ಆದ್ರೆ ನನ್ನ ಹೇಳ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಗ್ರಾಮರ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಇರಲ್ಲ ಕೆಲವು ಗ್ರಮಾಟಿಕಲ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಯುನೀಕ್ ಆಗಿ ವಿಶಿಷ್ಟವಾಗಿ ಒಂದು ಉಪಭಾಷೆಗೆ ಒಂದು ಫೀಚರ್ ಆಗಿ ಇರಬಹುದು Uh, yeah, ma'am, I have one more question. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'll, 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 I'll talk, sir, sorry. Uh, ma'am, uh, usually students, not only students, even now, when we speak second language, we just translate into, uh, you know, first of all, mother tongue in a format, then we translate into second language. Uh, either a learning, how far it... Ma'am, hello. Uh. Yeah. Ma'am. Did you get my question, ma'am? Last part is not the last part. I don't know. That's why, usually now, when we talk about language, we talk about the language. We talk about the language. First, we create our mother tongue. Then, we translate into the second language. Okay. This is the learning process. So, yes, to say it. Yeah. Is it the right uh, you know, learning language? Yes, it is. See, this is the first language. It's a big research question. Hmm? ಈ ಮೊದಲ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಕಲಿಯೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಪೂರಕಾನ ಮಾರಕಾನ ಅಂತ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ಫಾರ್ ಹಿಂಡ್ರೆನ್ಸ್ ನಾವು ಅಟ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ರಿಸರ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬಿಲೀವ್ಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಅಟ್ ಒನ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಗ್ರಾಮರ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಮೆಥಡ್ ವಾಸ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡರ್ಡ್ ಮೆಥಡ್ ವೇರ್ teachers gave a sentence in the mother tongue or in the other tongue and asked you to translate so translation from a to b language a to language b was a standard practice for teaching the second language right but after some time you know like let's say something like uh, 100 years ago or 70 80 years ago uh, direct method anta bantu illa ee tara 
ಇದಕ್ಕೆ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಕಲಿಯೋ ಮನಸ್ಸು ಬ್ರೇನೇ ಬೇರೆ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಕಲಿಯೋ ಬ್ರೇನೇ ಬೇರೆ ದಿಸ್ ಶುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಇಂಟರ್ಫಿಯರ್ ವಿತ್ ದಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಇಂಟರ್ಫಿಯರ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿಸ್ ದೇ ಫೋರ್ ಟೀಚ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಲಿ ಅಂತ ಒಂದು ಫೇಮಸ್ ಕೊಟೇಶನ್ ಸ್ಲೋಗನ್ ಟೀಚ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಲಿ ಸೊ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಅದ್ರ ಮಧ್ಯ ತರಬೇಡಿ ಇದನ್ನ ಇದರಲ್ಲೂ ಇತ್ತು ನಮ್ಮ ಕನ್ನಡ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತದಲ್ಲೂ ಇತ್ತು ಅಚ್ಚ ಕನ್ನಡದಲ್ಲಿ ತಂದಿಕ್ಕುವುದೆ ಸಕ್ಕದಂಗಳ ಅಂತೆಲ್ಲ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ ನೀವು ಅಚ್ಚ ಕನ್ನಡದಲ್ಲಿ ತಂದೆ ಇಡ್ತೀರಾ ತಕ್ಕುದೇ ಬೆರೆಸಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಘೃತ ಮೊಮ್ಮ ತೈಲ ಮೊಮ್ಮ ಅಂತ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ತುಪ್ಪಾನು ಎಣ್ಣೆಯನ್ನು ಬೆರೆಸಕ್ಕಾದ್ರೆ ಹೆಂಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಸಾಧ್ಯನ ಅದು ಅನ್ನೋ ರೀತಿ ಡಿಬೇಟ್ ದಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ವೆನ್ ಎವರ್ ಟು ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ಸೊ ಈಗ ಒಂದು ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ಏಟಿ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಅಗೋ ಇನ್ ದ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಮೆಥಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಾಸ್ ದ ಪಾಪ್ಯುಲರ್ ಮೆಥಡ್ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ದೆನ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಇಸ್ ಟಾಟ್ ಇನ್ ಒನ್ ಕಂಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಕನ್ನಡ ಇಸ್ ಟಾಟ್ ಇನ್ ಅನದರ್ ಕಂಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ರೈಟ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಕೆಪ್ಟ್ ಸಪ್ರೇಟ್ ಜನರಲ್ ಬಟ್ ಐ ಸಿ ಐ ಐ ಕಮ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಟ್ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಥಾಟ್ ವೇರ್ ಐ ಫೀಲ್ ದಟ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಯು ಕೆನಾಟ್ ರನ್ ಅವೇ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಯು ನೀಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ರನ್ ಅವೇ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಬಿಗ್ ರಿಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ and uh, you should be able to use it intelligently for learning another language because there are so many common aspects between uh, languages right more so when it is let's say learning kannada and telugu right kannada athwa kannada and tamil ivella sister languages adrinda illi eshto sala tamasha martive illi palu al halu illi palam al hanno ಪಾ ಹಾ ಆದ್ರೆ ಆಗೋಯ್ತು ಡಿಫ್ರೆನ್ಸ್ ಅನ್ನೋತರ ತಮಾಷೆ ಹೇಳ್ತಿರ ಆತರ ಯು ಓನ್ಲಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ದ ಡಿಫ್ರೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಒನ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಅನ್ನೋದು ಅಷ್ಟೇನೆ ದೇ ಫೋರ್ ಅದಷ್ಟು ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಂಡ್ರೆ ಆಯ್ತು ಯು ನೋ ಸೊ ಯು ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ಕಾಮನ್ ಬೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ನೋ ಏಟಿ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಕಾಮನ್ ಸೊ ಆಲ್ ಯು ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಡೂ ಇಸ್ ಟು ಪಿಕ್ ಅಪ್ ದ ಡಿಫ್ರೆನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಕ್ಯಾಬಿಲರಿ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ತಾನೆ ಅಂತ ಸೊ Uh, I feel personally that, uh, you, you know, like the, the first language is a very uh, strong uh, support in learning the second language and uh, there's mm-hmm. nothing wrong in it. Uh, but at some point, you have to have the discipline to say, okay, I have now used it as a crutch to walk. Now I leave the crutch and I'll walk independently. So you should be able to... say what you want to say in english uh, without the help of uh, the kannada uh, uh, you know like use it as a uh, as a crutch to walk but at some point you should grow out of it uh, and walk on your own only to come back to kannada i think we should be very proud multilingual in this country right we should be very proud of our uh, many languages right so uh, and therefore and in a multilingual context language is not a rigid compartment but it is a porous porous kind of a medium right ondakke nondakke hing harita irutte one bhasha inda innondakke and now hage harita irthivi hang harita irodene nam dodda ondu capability kuda so one bhasha innond bhasha ge interference annodu kevala anthara british linguist our context alli ja irbodashtene ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಅವರಲ್ಲಿ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಯು ನೋ ಲಾರ್ಜ್ಲಿ ಇಷ್ಟು ವರ್ಷ ಹಂಗಿತ್ತು ಈಗ ಅಲ್ಲೂ ತುಂಬಾ ಕಲ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಬಂದಿರೋದ್ರಿಂದ ಬೇರೆ ಭಾಷೆಗಳು ಬಂದ್ ಬಂದಿದೆ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ತರ್ಟಿ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಪ್ರಯರ್ ಟು ದಟ್ ದೇ ಕುಡ್ ದೇ ವರ್ ಮಾನೋಲಿಂಗುಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೇ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಮಾನೋಲಿಂಗುಲ್ ವೆರ್ ಇಸ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಮಲ್ಟಿಲಿಂಗುಲ್ ನಮ್ಗೆ ನಮ್ಮ ದೊಡ್ಡದೊಂದು ಏನೋ ನಿಧಿ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಬೇರೆ ಬೇರೆ ಭಾಷೆಗಳಿರೋದು ಅದರಿಂದ ಅದನ್ನ ಅದ ಪ್ರತಿಯೊಂದನ್ನು ಅದರ ಒಂದು ವಿಶಿಷ್ಟತೆ ಏನು ವಿಶೇಷ ಏನು ಅಂತ ತಿಳ್ಕೊಂಡು ಉಪಯೋಗಿಸೋದೇ ನಮ್ಗೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಜಾಣತನ ಅದರಿಂದ ಐ ಪರ್ಸನಲಿ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಆಸೆಟ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಮ್ಯಾಮ್ ಫೈನಲಿ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಥಾಟ್ ಅಂತಿರುತ್ತಲ್ಲ ಮ್ಯಾಮ್ ಸೊ ಇಫ್ 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 ವಿ ಆರ್ ಇಫ್
ಅನ್ನೋ ಒಬ್ಬ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫರ್ ಹೇಳೋ ಮಾತು ದ ಲಿಮಿಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಯುವರ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಲಿಮಿಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಯುವರ್ ಥಾಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಅಂತ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಭಾಷೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ತರ ಇದೊಂದು ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ಗೆ ಈಗ ಒಂದು ಕಾಮನ್ ಬಿಲ್ಲು ಅನ್ನೋದಕ್ಕೆ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಇದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ಪದ ಇದ್ರೆ ನಿಮಗೆ ಆ ಒಂದು ಫಿನಾಮಿನ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಒಂದು ಅರಿವು ನಿಮ್ಮ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ನೇಮಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ವೇ ಟು ಎಕ್ನಾಲೆಜಿಂಗ್ ದ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ ಫಿನಾಮಿನ ಆರ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಅನ್ನೋ ರೀತಿ ಅದರಿಂದ ಥಾಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಒಂದು ಪೇಪರ್ ನ ಆಚೆ ಈಚೆ ಇಟ್ಟ ಹಾಗೆ ಹಿಂಗೇನ ಹಿಂಗ್ ಕರೆದ್ರೆ ಇಲ್ಲೂ ತೂತಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಇಲ್ಲೂ ತೂತಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಅಲ್ವಾ ಎರಡೂ ಕಡೆ ಹೋದಂಗೆ ಆ ತರ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಥಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಅಟ್ ಆಲ್ ಥಾಟ್ ಇನ್ ಧಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಲಿವ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ರೈಟ್ ವಿಥೌಟ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಥಾಟ್ ಇಲ್ವಲ್ಲ ಅದರಿಂದ ದಿ ಆನ್ಸರ್ ಟು ಯುವರ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ಇಸ್ that language and thought are completely intimately connected one is not possible without the other ashtramatti hagagi and adrinda ondu bhashayanalli ga kannadadalli hididada bahudada kelavu satyagalanna athwa anubhavagalanna hagare english allo naavu hididada kagutta anta keledre adu there are exceptions aagda irabahudu ಯಾಕೆಂದ್ರೆ ಕನ್ನಡ ಒಂದು ಲೋಕದ ಒಂದು ಭಾಷೆಯಾಗಿ ಅದು ಫಂಕ್ಷನ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಅದನ್ನ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹಿಡಿದಿಡಕ್ ಸಾಧ್ಯನ ಅಂತ ಕೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಇವಾಗ ಈ ಕಿನ್ಶಿಪ್ ಟರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಅಂತೀವಲ್ಲ ಸಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಬ್ರದರ್ ಸೋದರ ಮಾವ ಸೋದರಳಿಯ ಇದು ಈಗ ಅಂಕಲ್ ಅಂತ ಒಂದೇ ಪದ ಸಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಇನ್ ಲಾ ಅಂತ ಒಂದೇ ಪದ ಅಜ್ಜಿ ಇದು ಗ್ರ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಮದರ್ ಅಂತ ಒಂದೇ ಪದ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ನಾನಿ ಇದೆ ದಾದಿ ಇದೆ ಎರಡು ಪದ ಇದೆ ನಾನಿಯ ಸ್ಟೇಟಸ್ ಬೇರೆ ದಾದಿ ಸ್ಟೇಟಸ್ ಬೇರೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಕುಟುಂಬಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಸೊ ನಾನಿ ಅಂಡ್ ದಾದಿ ಆರ್ ಡೆಫಿನೆಟ್ಲಿ ನಾಟ್ ಈಕ್ವಿವಲೆಂಟ್ ಯಾವ ಯಾವ ತರ ಸೋಷಿಯಲಿ ಸ್ಪೀಕಿಂಗ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ಆದ್ರೆ ಗ್ರ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಮದರ್ ಅಂದ್ಬಿಟ್ರೆ ಒಂದೇ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ಅದೇ ರೀತಿ ಸಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಇನ್ ಲಾ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅತ್ಗೇನೂ ಆಗ್ಬೋದು ನಾದ್ನಿನು ಆಗ್ಬೋದು ರೈಟ್ ಆದ್ರೆ ಅತ್ಗೆ ಅಂತ ಆದ್ರೆ ಒಂದು ಸ್ಥಾನಮಾನ ನಾರ್ನೇ ಆದ್ರೆ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಸ್ಥಾನಮಾನ ನಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ಇದು ಕನ್ನಡದಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ತರದ ಒಂದು ಸೂಕ್ಷ್ಮಗಳನ್ನೆಲ್ಲ ನಾವು ಅಹ್ ಈ ಪದಗಳು ಅಹ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಭಾಷೆ ಹಿಡಿದಿಡಿದ ಹಿಡಿದಿಟ್ಟಿದೆ ಯಾಕೆಂದ್ರೆ ಅದು ಇಲ್ಲಿಯ ಸಮಾಜಕ್ಕೆ ಬಹಳ ಮುಖ್ಯವಾದ ಒಂದು ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಅದೇ ಥಾಟ್ಸ್ ಇರಲ್ವಾ ಹಾಗಿದ್ರೆ ಡೆಫ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡಂಬ್ ಥಾಟ್ಸ್ ಇರುತ್ತ ಅನುಭವ ಇರುತ್ತಲ್ಲ ಅನುಭವ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಅಲ್ಲಲ್ಲ ನಿಮ್ಮ ನಿಮ್ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಬಹಳ ಗಹನವಾದ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಇದು ಆ ಸಂಗೀತದ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಸಂಗೀತಕ್ಕೆ ಅದರ ಭಾಷೆ ಅಂತ ಇಲ್ವಲ್ಲ ಹಾಗಾದ್ರೆ ಅದು ಏನು ಬಟ್ ಎಟ್ ನಮ್ಗೆ ನಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿ ಎಷ್ಟೋ ರೀತಿಯ ಭಾವನೆಗಳನ್ನ ಹುಟ್ಟಿಸುತ್ತೆ ಎಷ್ಟೋ ರೀತಿಯ ಇದು ಇದೆ ಅಂತ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಸಂಗೀತಕ್ಕೆ ಅದರದೇ ಆದ ಭಾಷೆ ಇದೆ ಅದು ಇಟ್ ನೀಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಅ ವರ್ಬಲ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಮ್ಯೂಸಿಕ್ ರೈಟ್ ಅ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಆಫ್ ನೋಟ್ಸ್ ಆ ನೋಟ್ಸ್ ನ ಬಳಸ್ಕೊಂಡು ಒಂದು ಅದ್ರದ್ದು ಒಂದು ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ಒಂದು ತರದ ಉತ್ತರ ಹೇಳಬಹುದು ಬಟ್ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಡೆಫ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡಮ್ ಇವ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಯೋಚನೆ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೆ ಹೌ ಡಸ್ ಇಟ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ದೇರ್ ಅಂತ ಬಟ್ ಈಗ ಅಲ್ಲಿಯ ಭಾಷೆ ಇದೆಯಲ್ಲ ಈ ಸೈನ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಇದೆಯಲ್ಲ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಅ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಸೊ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಅನ್ನೋದ್ರ ಡೆಫಿನೇಷನ್ ನೇ ನಾವು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ವಿಶಾಲ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ನೋಡಿದಾಗ ಆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಅನುಭವವನ್ನು ಒಳಗೊಳ್ಳುವ ಸಾಧ್ಯತೆಗಳು ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಈಗ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಮ್ಯೂಸಿಕ್ ಸೈನ್
ಅಗೇನ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಕೇಶನ್ ಅಂತ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಆಗುತ್ತಲ್ವಾ ಅವಾಗ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಕೇಶನ್ ಆದ್ರೆ ಅದು ಪ್ರಾಣಿಗಳ ವಿಷಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಲಿಮಿಟೆಡ್ ಏನು ಎಲ್ಲಿ ಊಟ ಸಿಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಯಾವ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಎಷ್ಟು ದೂರ ಹೋಗ್ಬೇಕು ಈ ತರ ಮೂರು ನಾಲ್ಕು ಮೆಸೇಜಸ್ ನ ಹೇಳೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಬೇಕಾದ ಭಾಷೆ ಇದೆ ಆದ್ರೆ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಇಲ್ದೆ ಇರೋ ಸತ್ಯನೆಲ್ಲ ಸೃಷ್ಟಿ ಮಾಡಿ ಸುಳ್ಳಿನ ಮೂಲಕ ಒಂದು ಇಡೀ ಪ್ರಪಂಚ ಕಟ್ಕೊಡೋ ಅಷ್ಟು ನಮ್ಗೆ ಏನು ಸತ್ಯದ ಮೇಲೆ ತಲೆ ಮೇಲೆ ಹೊಡೆದಂಗೆ ಸುಳ್ಳು ಹೇಳೋ ಅಷ್ಟು ನಮ್ಗೆ ಕೆಪಾಸಿಟಿ ಇದೆಯಲ್ಲ ಭಾಷೆನಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ತರದ ಒಂದು ವರ್ಸಟಾಲಿಟಿ ಅಹ್ ಒಂದು ಶಕ್ತಿ ಅಹ್ ಏನು ಬೇರೆ ಪ್ರಾಣಿಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಇರೋ ಭಾಷೆಯ ಇದು ಉಪಯೋಗ ಅಷ್ಟಿಲ್ಲ ಆ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಇಲ್ಲ ಆ ಆ ಸಾಮರ್ಥ್ಯ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅದೇ ಇರೋದು ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಗೆ ಮಾತ್ರ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಅದೇ ನನ್ನ ಒಂಥರ ಇದನ್ನ ಮೇ ಬಿ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ಆಸ್ಕ್ ಅನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪರ್ಟ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಟು ಸಿ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಸ್ಕೋಪ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಕೇಶನ್ ಈಗ ನ್ಯಾಚುರಲ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಇದೆಯಲ್ಲ ಅದಕ್ಕೂ ಸೈನ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಗುನು ಈಗ ಇದ್ರಲ್ಲೆಲ್ಲ ನೋಡ್ತೀವಲ್ಲ ನ್ಯೂಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಅದ್ರಲ್ಲೆಲ್ಲ ಪ್ಯಾರಲ್ ಆಗಿ ಇರುತ್ತಲ್ಲ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಾನು ಹೇಳುದು ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಕೇಶನ್ ಇಲ್ದೆ ಹೋದ್ರೆ ಭಾಷೆ ಇಲ್ದೆ ಹೋದ್ರೆ ಥಾಟ್ ಇರೋಲ್ವಾ ಅಂತ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ರೆಷನ್ ಬಹುಶಃ ಅವರು ಬೇರೆ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಅನ್ಸುತ್ತೆ ಮೈ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಕೇಶನ್ ಗೆ ನೀವು ಹೇಳ ಭಾಷೆ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಸೈನ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಇರುತ್ತಲ್ಲ ಅಲ್ಲ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಕೇಟ್ ಮಾಡದೇ ಇದ್ರೆ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಕೇಶನ್ ನಾನು ಯೋಚನೆ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಕೇಶನ್ ಇಲ್ದೇ ಇದ್ರೆ ಥಾಟ್ ಇಲ್ವಾ ಅಂತ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಆ ಭಾಷೆನೇ ಇಲ್ದೆ ಹೋದ್ರೆ ಮುಂಚಿನ್ಲುವೆ ಈಗ ಈ ವೈಲ್ಡ್ ಚೈಲ್ಡ್ ಅಂತ ಒಂದ್ ಸಿನಿಮಾ ಇದೆ ಹ್ಮ್ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ಮಗು ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಕಾಡಲ್ಲಿ ಕಳೆದೋಗುತ್ತೆ ಒಂದು ತೋ ತೋಳನೋ ಏನೋ ಹೇಳ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಒಂಥರ ಇದು ಭಾಷೆನೆ ಇರ್ಲಿಲ್ಲ ಅವನ್ ಅದ್ರ ಅವನ್ ಯಾವ ಭಾಷೆ ಇತ್ತು ಆ ಉಲ್ಫ್ ಏನೇನ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಿತ್ತೋ ಆ ಭಾಷೆ ಇತ್ತು ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಅವನಿಗೆ ರೈಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಟು ಕನ್ವರ್ಟ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಅವನ್ಗೆ ತುಂಬಾನೆ ಟ್ರೈನಿಂಗ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಮಾಡಿ ಅದೆಲ್ಲ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ತುಂಬಾ ಲಿಮಿಟೆಡ್ ಆಗಿ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಚೈಲ್ಡ್ಹುಡ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಆ ಭಾಷೆಯ ಸಾಧನವನ್ನ ಉಪಯೋಗ ಮಾಡಕ್ ಆಗದೇ ಇದ್ದಿದ್ರಿಂದ ಇಟ್ ಗಾಟ್ ಲಿಮಿಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಪಿಕ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಪ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಸಮ್ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ಮೆಸೇಜಸ್ ವೆರ್ ಎಸ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಚೈಲ್ಡ್ ಕಂಪೇರ್ ಟು ದಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅ ವೆರೈಟಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅ ವರ್ಸಿಟಾಲಿಟಿ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಅನ್ ಬೀಟ್ ರೈಟ್ ಬಹುಶಃ ನಾವು ಈ ಡಿಸ್ಕಷನ್ ಅನ್ನ ಮುಂದೆ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಇದೇ ತರ ಡಯಲಾಗ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಚೇಂಜ್ ಅಂತ ಇಟ್ಕೋಬಹುದು ಅಂತ ಅನ್ಸುತ್ತೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ಸ್ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಸಂಪತ್ ಕುಮಾರಿ ಅವರು ಯು ಕಿ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಅ ಫ್ಯೂ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಎನ್ಲೈಟ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಐ ಶುಡ್ ಸೇ ನಮ್ಮ ಹುಡುಗರಿಗೆ ಸಾಕಷ್ಟು ಮನಸ್ಸಲ್ಲಿ ಇದು ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ಸ್ ಇತ್ತು ಆ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ಸ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಆನ್ಸರ್ ಆಗಿದೆ ಅಂತ ಅನ್ಕೊಳ್ತೀನಿ ಐ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡಿಂಗ್ ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾಡಮ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ವೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ಒನ್ ಮಾಲ ಮ್ಯಾಡಮ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ವೇಟಿಂಗ್ Oh, even I was waiting. Actually, this is the first time I'm listening to you. It was very interesting and very nice. Thank you so much, madam. Thank very, you so much. Very welcome. I enjoyed. After a long gap, I'm, I was going back to my, uh, you know, English teaching <laughs> time. Because uh, more oh, recently, I've done really. only translations and uh, talked about literature and so
So uh, I really thank Natraj for starting the series. Thank but, you, thank you, madam. Thank you, but uh, the credit also goes to Altaf because Altaf could have non 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 <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. First, and Alta, young scientific mind, and other prove time and again. You're right. You're right. <laughs> time and again, he proves that yeah. he has young scientific mind and a researcher, of course. Yeah. 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 Uh, thank, you, thank, you, yeah. thank you, Altaf. Thank, thank you, Mr. Altaf. It was nice getting to know you and working with you both of fun. Thank you. Yeah. Same year, ma'am. Same year. Thank you once again, madam. Yeah. With this, we will sign off for today. Feedback link na na no chat box al hakidine. You can take the feedback link from there. And uh, we will meet again tomorrow at 10:30 a.m. The lecture is uh, for Canada and uh, computer science for commerce students. We had one session for science students, but tomorrow it's computer science for commerce students. And then finally we have biology lecture. So with that, we would conclude tomorrow. I hope to see you all tomorrow at yeah. the same time. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye.